All right, man. Hey, guys. What's going on? Not much, man. Busy week as always. Yeah. Studying, studying for these films for tonight. Right, man. It's been a hell of a week. Getting getting beat down. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of your relief now to come and do this, isn't it, really? Like, yeah, man. Takes yeah, you yeah. away from things. and it's like, yeah. the, it's like the sanity, you know. Exactly, exactly. But, um, yeah, we got three really, I think, interesting films tonight. Um, it's going to be, like, really, I want to know what your, you know, thoughts are on all three of these. I kind of yeah, roughly know, but, yeah, right. when we get into them, I think this is going to be a good one. So we're, so tonight, this is a, a This Just In episode. So we recently got this box set, uh, The Forgotten Jolly Volume 6. It's got three films, uh, which all three of these I'd never seen. I know Darren's probably, you've seen them all? I've seen them all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. I'd never seen none of these, so uh, I was I'm I'm happy to do it, man. So, but this is episode thirty eight, Hour to Kill. Wow! And it's all, it's also episode number five of uh, this just in. <laughs> so, like, you yeah, know, yeah, it's kind of crazy that I do it that way, but whatever, man. But it's we're back in there like somewhere. Year, like, you know. It's like the one year anniversary as well. I think almost dead on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost one year, man. We've been doing this, so crazy, man. Hell crazy. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I'm hyped about this one, though, man. Like, I think this is a pretty solid yeah. set. Uh, just to kind of spoil it right out the gate a little bit, but we're gonna get into the films, of course. But uh, yeah, let me let me check the chat, man, right quick. Uh, yeah, we got some comments in here now. So we got we got Corey in here. What's going on? Hey, Corey. From uh, Wilkie's Mu Movies and Music. Uh, what's going on, man? Uh, we got Texas. Hey, Tex. Uh, he's saying, hey, panel. Uh, hey, panel of pain. Hey, panel yeah, of man. pain. Uh, let's see. Everybody talking. Got Blissful. Hey. Hey, Blissful. Going? Glad Good you're here. Blissful in you. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Texas. Okay, there people are talking. Uh, we got culture training in here, man. What's going on? Been a, been hey, a while. Trini. I've seen training, but we usually stream like at four, I think. So that might have something to do with it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, because we did it. Yeah, last week we did a different time, didn't we? We did it on the Sunday. Um, yeah, we did it on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, Holland's in the house as well. What's okay, up, I didn't see Holland. What's hey, up, man? Holland. What's going on, brother? Yeah, man. But yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll we'll just start it out, man. Unless there's anything you want to bring up before we before we get going. I mean, we can mention that we were on the the um the dead end drive in with uh flesh wound uh features Dan, Sean, and uh Keith from uh Gorfo. And we just did the second episode of that. We cover um, Humongous and Hell Knight. So, yeah. So, everyone, you know, after this stream, go over to Visit by Voices One and give that video a watch because I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. And it's like a different format as well. You know, it's kind of like um, informal, you know, more relaxed sort of approach to what we usually do. And right. um, there's loads more of those to come. Like, we got a lot planned for them. Yeah, man, I, I enjoyed doing it. And those two were blind watches as well. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited, man, because I keep watching a bunch of films I've never seen. And uh, really, that's that's really where I'm at. I really want to see stuff I've never seen. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what it's all about. You know, I was surprised that you hadn't seen any of these. But yeah. if you think about it, you know, Death Carries a Cane has never really had a DVD release of any kind. Right. Uh, we'll we'll come on to that. I know. Uh, Bloodstained Shadow was not one you would like. Not a lot of people would like. You know, mention that one. Right. Uh, and of course, Naked You Die. Uh, you know, you never hear anyone mention that either. So it's yeah. good to get these titles out there and right. have a good full review. I think we're going to do on all three now. Well, yeah, man. I, I guess uh, so. We'll start with uh, Naked You Die, which is the Italian title. Um, you know, the, the old DVD cover that. 
Got oh. a glare, but yeah. Uh, let me. I'll zoom in on it so people. Can yeah, see. yeah, yeah. So That's the naked. first way I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a. Is that the UK cut? I mean, the English cut or whatever. No, this is Dark Sky Films. This is the US release. I don't think it's ever been released in the UK. No, I mean, is it is it English cut though, like or the Italian cut? Oh, good question. Like the, the language, you know what I mean? Because there's two cuts, and the Italian cuts ninety seven minutes. And okay, the, yeah. The English language cut is seventy seven minutes, I believe. No, I see Italian. It's the full uncut Italian version. Okay, yeah, that's the way to see it because I watched. The first 30 minutes it with the English uh, language, I watched the first 30 minutes. I said, hold on, man. I'm going to watch it in the Italian cut. So I went back to the Italian. And in the first 30 minutes, it's, it's pretty different. Like, it's a good bit, man. So I was like, well, shit, I'm just going to stay with the Italian. You know what I mean? So Yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to get, if I'd had time, I would have got rain to do in that as well. Right. But I mean, you know. There's always, you know, we can always feature that again and, well, and watch that again. What I noticed was how short the English version that I was watching was. There's only, a, it said 117, it said 77 minutes. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. You know, so, so that's, that's like 20 minutes difference. Yeah. It's a 20 minutes difference. Yeah. And yeah. it's not like this film has got a lot of gore in and like, no, sex but it does have, anyway. it does have, uh, like for 1968, it does have a booty shot that the English language cut don't have. So right, know. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, um, yeah. A couple other things too. I mean, there's 20 minutes difference of dialogue, story, story, everything. So, but anyway, uh, so the other titles for this is uh, Schoolgirl Killer, which is what we were talking about, the English language cut. Uh, right. There's another. The Young, the Evil, and the Savage is another title it had. And uh, Cry Nightmare, which that damn music, when the movie starts, don't it sound like Batman? I just got, got it written down, man. Um, <laughs> it sounds like the old Batman. The it's old almost Batman exactly theme, man. the same as yeah. the theme, but just with different lyrics. Right. Like Nightmare, yeah. you know? Right. And it kind of right. works, but I, right. I don't know. The music in this is kind of like, Got like a goofy feel to it sometimes, you know. This is kind of hokey, kind of goofy. Uh, Mario Baba, the actress Eleanor Brown said that Mario Baba was supposed to originally direct this one, but for some reason she didn't know why, and I don't know why either. But he didn't. He ended up not doing it. But I thought you said Mario Baba might have wrote it. Right. Or, so yeah, we can come into that. Yeah. So okay. Mario Baba was going to. Um, Direct the type uh, a jalo titled "Cry Nightmare" um, in yeah. the mid 1960s, and it was an idea about a killer, um, like a school for young debutantes. It doesn't say whether they were female or male. But, What's um, going on, Gore? I was just going to say, hey, to Keith. All right, hey, Keith. Um, yeah. So, Barber met, you know, with the uh, English scriptwriters in Rome in like mid 1966, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, Contributed ideas to the script and did his own kind of storyboards. Um, but he backed out shortly before filming after an argument with the producers. So that's why that happened. Uh, okay. On then to do Danger Diabolique. I think they, they were getting the idea for that ready. And um, yeah, Antonio Margariti then jumped on board. Because I think yeah. he was um, kind of a friend of the producers as well. So it kind of made sense. Yeah, Titanus. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so Antonio Margariti directed it. Just to name a few of his films, he did Castle of Blood, uh, Long Hair of Death, and uh, Web of the Spider. He also did Seven Deaths in the Cat's Eye. Uh, yeah, he's yeah, done a ton know. of films, but I was just, I just, those are a few I wrote down. Did Cannibal Apocalypse as well, which yeah, is Cannibal probably Apocalypse. his most famous, I would say. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I saw that like. A little over a year ago, when the first time I oh, saw wow. it. Oh, wow. With I love John Saxon and uh, yeah. Yeah. Giovanni uh, Radici. Giovanni Rod Radici. Yeah. Lombardo. Yeah, or, how do you, <laughs> you know? But. Giovanni Lombardo Radici, I think. It right, is, right. Yeah. So anyway, the, the film starts out. There's this woman gets drowned and 
even though the Italian cut is like the better cut to watch, it's still pretty like tame. Like it don't really show nothing. She's like covering up and stuff like that. But uh, so this 1968, it's like right at the right at the brink of the sexual revolution, I guess you'd say. So they're trying to push the edge, but Margariti, I don't know. He just he's just not hitting it there yet. You know, maybe then the following year is when we start seeing more stuff. Uh, but yeah, because it's so, quite tame by by you know shallow standards. It is really tame. Yeah, you know, yeah, we will say that. So there's a woman. She's drowned and in her bathtub. And uh, I mean that whole setup, the way it looks, it's cool. You see the glove, the black glove killer turns the music up before he goes into the bath. She's got a radio playing. He turns the music up and then he goes in there, strangles her in the bathtub and, uh, you know, strangling her while drowning her at the same time. And then, uh, and then he takes her and puts her in a big old trunk, like this big ass luggage trunk. And then he, and then he sends it to this uh, boarding school. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that's kind of, yeah. but that, earlier scene then you just mentioned right it's completely lifted um from blood and black lace yeah. you know uh, and then when you realize that barbara wrote this as well right like it does make sense because yeah. the scene apart from like the razor slashings is exactly the same as the blood and black lace you know um scene right. in that but um like dirk said as well you know we got the the nightmare song that plays like the credits as well, it sounds exactly like Batman. It's you cannot hear it once you hear once you hear it. You can't yeah, it sounds it exactly mind. like the Adam West Batman. Yeah, just with different lyrics on top, basically, right. like Nightmare the song. Right. Um, but but so the trunk sent to Hilda College, and there's like these, and this this uh, boarding school for these these uh, young women, I guess you'd say, is uh, they're like seventeen, right? Most of them. I mean, the actresses are they're supposed like to be 30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're supposed, they're to, supposed be to be 70. like eight, coming up to 18. Yeah, yeah. And then, so uh, the trunk gets sent there, and then, but they're like super rich, super spoiled type shit going on, you know? Um, but yeah, that's kind of like the setup of the film. Uh, Let's see. They uh, all come from like really privileged backgrounds. Yeah. Which yeah. is super, like a major plot point later on as well with the one super, girl. Yeah, super rich. It's shot really well. Like Margariti, there's I don't think I anything I've seen of his, man, always look looks great, you know. Oh god, uh, yeah, absolutely. You've got to give it that. You know, the look of this film is amazing. It might um kind of disappoint a few Jalo fans with the the lack of gore and the lack of sleaze. Um, there's a little bit of like suggestiveness with the underage girls, but um, there's even yeah. some suggested uh, lesbianism. There is, yeah, and this was <laughs> kind of wasn't so this it is like kind of pushing PG? some bars in '68, you know? Yeah, yeah, this was kind of a, like a PG rate in for that time, you know, what the equivalent of that would be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you got the shots early on. Then we kind of see these teachers going up to this like school. Uh, St. Hilda College, as Dirk said. Um, and they're all different kind of characters. You've got Mrs. Clay. She's, like, new at the school. She's starting. Um, you've got Richard Barrett, who's, like, the riding teacher. He's kind of like this um, very confident, young kind of... Uh, he's a young... Type, yeah, you know? young teacher, and he's kind of have... He's got something going with one of the... Uh, with one of the girls, I guess yeah. you know. Um, Very inappropriately, but yeah. I guess I um, go through the cast right quick and let you finish. Yeah, yeah, go, uh, go for it. So, man. Yeah. so you got Mark Damon, Mark Damon playing uh this guy Richard that Darren was just talking about. Uh, Eleonora Brown, which you see probably to the top left on my back on my backdrop. Uh, she's uh Lucille, Lucille, and then you got Sally Smith is playing Jill, and she's like a London. She's an actress, theater actress, I believe, from London. Um, yeah, she's a UK actress. She did a lot of um, UK TV. Okay. But I couldn't find much more out on her, you know, like films-wise. Right. I couldn't either. Uh, but I did, wa I did watch her interview. So she, uh, Margariti wanted her. So, you know, he got her. 
like you know yeah yeah and to me i think she's the standout of the whole film i mean I don't know. She's a different level of actress, I think. Like yeah. she plays this very like cheeky kind of girl. Yeah, it's um, funny. It's kind of hokey comedy mixed in there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people might be put off by it, but I kind of had fun with it. I had fun with the character. She kept it interesting. She's like a no nonsense type. Uh, right. Know, yeah. She threw out the bullshit. Like, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. It's kind of right. like a bit of a troublemaker, and she's kind of yeah. pushing pushing the bar a little bit. Right. But um, she comes into play quite a bit in the film as like an am amateur sleuth, really. Right. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that, yeah. Right. But yeah, uh, so then you got, and then you got Michael Rennie, which is a British actor. Like, I'm not real familiar, but I know he was in Dracula versus Frankenstein. And I know that that, we just got a release of that uh, that just came out recently. Uh, I still haven't, I still haven't watched it, but. Do you know anything about Michael Rennie? He's supposed to be like this big time British actor. Uh, All I could really find out was um, the things of interest to me is that he did like um, the Hal Alfred Hitchcock Hour and Alfred Hitchcock Presents TV right. shows. So I'm guessing, you know, I didn't really, I, I've never heard of him before this. Okay. So well, I'm, he was mainly 50s, 60s, big in the 50s and 60s. But sorry yeah. if anybody's like screaming at the screen right now, like, you know, like, because we don't know, but, you know, uh, but yeah, man, I, that's, that's pretty much it. I was just, and I mean, there's other cast members, but I, I got the main players in here, you know, oh, the I got, one I, the one I, got, I, or a couple I would say, if that's okay, is, um, yeah, go ahead. Luciano Pagosi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He plays La Foray, which is kind of this gardener, uh, this creepy gardener guy. Yeah. He's in a ton of, bills. he's a character actor, a ton of films. Uh, he always plays that small role character uh, in a lot of movies. He's very distinctive looking as well with the the bug eyes and right. and all that. Uh, Sorry, man. I the only mean other, no, that's no no worries, man. The only other one I want to say, like, and I didn't realize this until I watched the second time round, is the blonde girl is Sylvia Dionose, um, the the girl who was in Murder Obsession with the blonde oh. hair, you know. Oh. Um, Okay. Yeah, I I didn't recognize her at first, and then Damn. I went back and I was looking through the cast and credits and realized uh, it was her, and she was married to Diodato, um, famously. She did a few um, Pisteski films. She did uh, Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man, which is Diodato. So I'm I'm guessing they were in the relationship at that time. Uh, Fear in the City, Ring of Death, and I mean she's done some good, you know, some good stuff. Um, I don't know if you want to just check the comments first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me go. I see some more people came in. Yeah, we yeah. Got, we got Jamie Hart. Hey, Hello, Jamie. In to leave some love. Awesome. Ah, good to I have you it. in in there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, let's see people talking to each other. Gore says Batman. Batman. He's doing a Batman theme. Bam! Yes. Bam! Yeah. Ooh, bam! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it really is, man. So, uh, yeah, I have that in my noggin now. Bless us, uh, might have to watch my box set now. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I oh, you, you won't be disappointed, I don't think. Yeah. Let's see, you got uh, you got Gizmo in here. What's going on, man? Hey, Gizmo. And then we got um, everybody saying, hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, okay, Texas knows a little something. He says, oh, yeah, man, I forgot about that. Yeah, I did see that. I, I should have wrote that down. Michael Rennie was in The Day the Earth Stood Still. But I, okay. I, I, I was, it's a film that I should have seen, but I'm not sure if I have seen. But it, it might have been on TV, and when I was a kid, and I was just not interested or something. <laughs> like, I don't know, but... Right, it doesn't sound like anything I would be interested in. But right, I know yeah, that title. Really that's old. a big. That's a big movie. Uh, yeah, whatever yeah. time it came out. But uh, yeah. But um, yeah, like you say, so we got the you know all these teachers they're driving up to the school, um, and weirdly they they pass this bug house, which I is 
like a real weird thing that comes into play in the film later on, um, which has got this entomologist staying there. And he like obviously, you know, studies insects and all that. But that's that again is um, basically ripped off, you know, from a Bay of Blood or a Bay of Blood kind of ripped it off from this film, which is kind of makes me think Bava wrote this this scene and they just kept it in the script. This is from the original script. It has to be, but Bava kind of just thought, you know, it was my idea. Then he put it into his own film, right. uh, Bay of Blood. But um, so I thought second. that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, my wife just popped in here. So uh, Hey, Tash. She says, uh, I love the dedication for this channel that Dirk and Darren has. Good job, guys. I appreciate that, babe. Yeah, I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Hell yeah. But... Sorry, man. <laughs> no, that's all right, man. Um, so, yeah, you've got, you know, so you've got all these teachers going up to the school now. Um, you've got different characters. You've got that um, the lead headmistress is called Miss Transfield, and she's, like, really strict. But there's a hint of lesbianism with her very early on, which is weird for this It's film. more than a hint because she's like, yeah, look, I got, yeah. a, I got a new room for you and it's connected to my room and all this shit. And you're like. <laughs> and then you're thinking <laughs> I mean, that this film is going to go in a different way. Yeah. But it is. The only it, way it, I can describe it is like a PG version of a, of a Jalo film. Yeah. And even the title, Naked You Die. You think there's going to be some, you know all kind of nudity and all this crazy stuff, you know, but yeah, not really like you get one butt shot of a woman getting put in a trunk of after she was strangled under in the bathtub and uh, drown. And that's yeah. it. So that kind of uh, makes me think when I first watched the film, I was a bit underwhelmed by the lack of gore and, and sleaze and that. But I mean, this time rain, which we'll come on to later on, I did like it a lot more. Um, so, yeah, you've got Lucille then, you know, that lady, you know, above in the frame. Um, she kind of in this relationship with Richard, and it's very inappropriate, like, because he's a lot older than her. She's, what, 17, coming up 18? Yeah. And, um, but it's just kind of talked about as if it's just normal, which is kind of strange. Um, you've got Jill. She kind of fancies the swimming instructor, which is even worse because he's, like, ancient. He's like, yeah, man, she's liking on these older dudes and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what my wife's asking here. She's saying, is it frozen? I don't know. Are we frozen? Um, it's going okay on my end. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe it is frozen on her end, watching it on the laptop or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you say, um, you know, with the first murder as well. So we've got this killer on the loose in this school. Um, Jill, the jokey character we mentioned earlier, she kind of gets this walkie talk and she's kind of trying to write their own Jallo film, and she Dirk? something like that, or some. Yeah, she's really thriller. like it. She's really into the like the whole, um, also the spy kind of thing, mystery, spy yeah. stuff, and we find out why toward the end of the film, but. Uh, yeah, because she kind of is is the amateur sleuth in this, really. She kind of helps the police in a way, right. uh, which we'll come yep. on to. But you've got, yeah, you've got the, the gardener, the creepy gardener guy. He, um, he goes around creeping up, climbing up trees and watching the girls in the shower. And again, you would think this is really sleazy, but it's not done like that at all. No. Um, and I mean, like the whole, the like I said, the way everything is shot, is real bright, especially like on this release. I, I'm, I'm sure the old release wasn't nothing like this, but it right. almost, yeah. I mean, Marguerite looks similar to how Baba shoots things. Don't you agree in a way? Yeah, like, it's probably the closest, like him and Freda are probably the closest, I would right. say, yeah. to Baba. Same kind of style in a way. So, uh, but, but like the production design, the, the, the costume design, they're all wearing like these you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, they, they're all wearing uniforms, but they're all like, it's very 60s. It's of its time. The hairstyles are of their time, you know, but it's, yeah. it's cool, man. I dig it, man. I really do. Uh, so, yeah. So we get, so this killer now, he's on, he's on the loose in this school, right? So we, we see like a POV shot now, someone creeping around the cellar 
And um, Betty Ann, she's down there because she wants basically wants to get her kind of trunk that was sent over. She wants to go and check that out. Um, right. But she's yeah, strangled. Yeah, she's like a real spoiled bitch, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of the, of the group. Yeah. Very stuck up. and Yeah, very spoiled. But um, we are going to give minor spoilers. We're not going to give the total ending away or anything. But um, she does go down. You know, she gets strangled. Um, but we see, like, a close-up of her eyes. And that's kind of basically it. There's no gore, no... Um, no, you do see the hands come around her throat. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the whole, the only thing we see after. Strangulation. After that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but like I say, it really is a strange one because, you know, you'd expect more. Because um, this was only a year before Bird with the Crystal Plumage as well. Yeah. But um, I guess just our gentle just upped everything for that film. But it was um, like two years, right? So it's 68. So, yeah, right. it depends because a lot of people say Bird was filmed in 69 and it kind of overlaps at, like when it was released in 70. But, yeah. Um, yeah, same, yeah. same, it's a year or two different. Uh, yeah, yeah, not not very long at all in between two. Because um, I got two years down for it uh, before Plumage. Uh, and then um, it's also you could compare this to uh, what, have, what have they done to Solange? Uh, but I was thinking that as well, but but a very tame, tame. version of that, yeah. And like, Solange came out what two years later, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I, 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 I'm kind of tentative to put it into like with, with those and what have you done to your daughters and that because they're completely different. They, they really are, you know. Uh, no, I know. Old, I'm just saying, that. as far as the schoolgirl thing and everything you know yeah yeah you yeah because there's not that many actually that just focus on school girls in a school there's right i think we've got one um that we covered the haste of scream just kind of does that thing as well but i think does it a lot better um it's kind of like the the jalo this this jalo's like in the early stages right of, of getting its footing like the, yeah. the common tropes haven't really all been put out there yet, you know. Yeah, like a proto, I'd say, like a proto Jalo. But yeah. you do have like but you got blood and black lace growing yeah, too yeah. much, so it's kind of weird in that sense too, you know. Like what? Why Margarita didn't go for it? So, uh, but he does do which he the, the scenes I do like is the black. You know, we do see the black love, and we do see the POV shots of the killer creeping around, which is great. Yeah, all that you know. I, I just think you know if they'd have upped the violence, this like we'd be talking about this film a lot more, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, so we've got this creepy gardener, um, and he's kind of like the number one suspect, I'd say, for the killings at one point early right. on. Yeah, uh, Jill kind of a... like singles him out and says it's him to everyone, and like yeah, there there's a real creepy kind of scene with him, like staring through the bathroom window in a tree or whatever and or behind a bush or whatever right and yeah yeah it's actually that scene i keep talking about it that scene to the that picture to the left at the top uh is where he's doing all that crap you know like just a real sweaty sleazy guy man <laughs> like you know and so. you kind of like minor spoiler but usually with these characters you you know their red herrings you know there's you know, no you can automatically, uh, yeah, yeah, you're not gonna make him the killer, being the, the killer. <laughs> so. right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like you say, you know, um, this black love killer, then I, I suppose you could call him, gets hold of this trunk, um, with, with where this dead body is held. Um, but with the girl that's gone missing, you know, I think it's Betty Ann, um, has been just been killed, the one we mentioned, strangled. Um, they all go looking in like a local park, see whether they can find her. The whole school is put into kind of lockdown. Um, but strangely enough, the headmistress doesn't want to bring the police in at this point. And I'm thinking, yeah. crazy man. <laughs> she don't want school the school She don't want the bad publicity. Exactly. This yeah. Is a, this is a super elite. You know, right. Yeah. Type, yeah. Type people, so they're not. They don't want no bad publicity for the school or they're going to lose some funding is what um, I got from it, you know. 
kind of, you know, when a girl gets killed and she says, oh, it's a school matter, it kind of makes yeah. you scratch your head a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Just thinking about yeah. the funding of the <laughs> bro. Yeah, so the main plot really is, like, Lucille, this well-to-do girl, basically, she's having this affair with this teacher, Richard. Um, and they kind of, like, you know, the killer kinds to be in some ways after her. But she always seems to be missing the killer. Yeah. For some reason or other, you know, she goes to meet her friend later on in the film and the friend dies and all that. Um, but yeah, like like um like I say, this is really gone up in my estimation. Um yeah. because I, I when I first seen this, I, I actually put it down to like maybe a four or five out of ten. And okay. um on rewatch is a strong six. I know Dirk likes it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm, I'm going to go six and a half out of ten because it's still, I feel like it's still an important film. You know what I mean? I think it, it helps the, like, Jallo's just getting his footing, you know? Yeah. During, the, no, during these years. So, and Marguerite's kind of, like, from what I understand, too, like, the entire cast, everybody. Uh, loved Marguerite. They had nothing but great things to say about him, that he was like a wonderful director to work for, you know? Well, um, yeah, absolutely. I I mean, he is top tier. Like, even well Barbara, Steel, it. Barbara Steele said that, too. I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he he's like a true class act kind of guy, you know? Uh, oh, he's highly regarded. He's, he's up there with the likes of Argento in terms of, you know, possibly higher in terms of, you know, the general Italian public. Yeah. Um, but I do want to get one scene in as well, which you good? for me is one of the best. Is um, this one girl goes to meet Richard, um, and this black dove killer is like dressed up in diving gear. Uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. This this killer drags her into the water, and uh, I mean, I think it's a standout scene of the film. It is, man. It's great. It's a great scene. He's drowning her in that swimming pool, like. And he's got oxygen and she don't <laughs> like so yeah, it's like yeah, it's pretty damn good. Uh, and we even got the Batman theme as well. <laughs> oh yeah, you get the Batman some more. And uh but you know, did you, you did notice though that Margariti still didn't really get away from his uh from his a uh gothic. Ain't this is his first jello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't so think he, he did he didn't completely didn't he? get away from the gothic because there's some gothic tones to the film you know right yeah didn't he do the virgin of nuremberg as well in like 1963 i think it was which is not a fully fledged shallow but it's kind of got that gothic feel and uh yeah. italian horror. i thought this was his first yellow um, yeah i think this was his first bonavide yellow yeah, yeah yeah okay um yeah i'm not sure he... on that one i haven't seen a whole lot of margariti i've seen castle of blood and i've seen uh long-haired death web of the spider Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eye, but I haven't seen his whole filmography. You know, that's why I what's wrote your them. like without getting on a tangent, what's your thoughts on seven deaths in a cat's eye? Because that's fucking hokey as fucking some parts. With that eight, I, I like it, man. It's not I the like best. it. You know, it's yeah. a good it's good, but not great kind of deal. Uh, and um, just for people listening, if you've not seen that, it does have this fucking ape in this castle, locked up in this castle. Um Crazy film, but I highly recommend people to check that out. That's a great um, name for a film too, because it had a, the alternate title was uh, what is it? Uh, or am I? I'm mixing. Never mind. I'm mixing something else up completely. Just disregard that last stuff. <laughs> so I do want to get Dirk some um, opinions though, because we're not going to spoil this, right? But the twist in this, I thought, was fucking amazing. Yeah, I, it, oh, it yeah. completely had me fooled. Yeah, I didn't like, see that shit coming at all. That's 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 one of the strengths of this one, for sure. And I mean, yeah, we won't say what it is, but I mean, it's done so well. I've seen it done possibly in a few films before. Yeah, but the execution and and everything and the misdirection in this film, it, it is amazing. Um, right, right. But if you want to yeah. rewatch. On a rewatch, I'll say this: that when you do watch it again, you're gonna be like, "Damn, I should have seen that shit all along," you know? Uh, yeah, I, I thought that because I always watch them twice, as I've mentioned yeah, yeah. before. And on and it does kind of when you watch it back, 
you the the hints are there, but yeah, completely bypassed. They're definitely you. there. So. Yeah, but, but then there's other hints. Yeah. There's other red herons to knock you off your route. You know exactly. Like, and like any Jalo film, it's not. It's never going to make complete sense. Yeah. Um, the the kind of reveal and why it's done though is is like. Yeah, there's you can't really. There's no real holes in it. I don't think too much. Um, you could possibly argue one or two things, but I mean, for what yeah. it is of the day, like yeah. Um, but yeah, like I say, um, I don't know if it's, you've got a, it's a legit. Or... It's a legit motive for sure. It is, yeah, and it's like you say, it's just done so well. Um, yeah. People might, you know, if they watch this, they might remember that twist in another couple of films. That, that was before, which I'm not going to mention, back in the early 60s. But, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it floored me. Like, even second time, I forgot all about that twist. And I'm like, shit, that's just amazing. And I think that's why I kind of put it up, like, as in my score. Yeah. Um, at least a point, you know? Yeah, it's um, still, like, it's, it's, it's not, like, upper tier. This is still, this is going to be right in the mid-tier, Jalo, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say like definitely mid tier, maybe right. to, towards the bottom of mid tier for me. But, um, yeah, what score did you give it? I gave it a six and a half out of ten, six and a half. So, yeah, yeah, not not too dis, um, dissimilar to me. Like, um, I've, I've got a few little bits and pieces like background if you want. Um, so it was shot in the summer of 1967, um, and it was titled Seven Virgins for the Devil. Um, yeah. It was released theatrically in Italy in February uh, 68 as Nude Sim Nuor. I, you know, I'm butchering that, which obviously in Italian is Naked You Die. Um, the script was titled um, Cry Terror um, and yeah. was credited to Margariti and Botari. I got um, Cry Nightmare down. And, and I've got that as well, yeah. Okay. So Cry Terror, uh, Cry Nightmare was the original script, both, both names. I still um, think uh, I like, I mean, I like Naked You Die, but I think I like The Young, The Evil, and The Savage. I like that. Yeah, part. that's how I originally kind of got to know it, I think. Right, um, that's a cool title. Uh, that really is, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I say, um, AIP American International Pictures released this um, as The Young, The Evil, and The Savage. But like Dirk said earlier on, completely butchered i haven't seen it i haven't seen the 20 minute less version but yeah all i can gather there must be a lot of dialogue well i started and... watching it and i noticed how short it was and i was like wait a minute let me go back and check the italian <laughs> so so i did uh yeah. what was kind of amazing for me with this one was um the italian census passed this as suitable for all ages which i guess is a pg um yeah and there's some you know, with the guy climbing the tree and, you know, the yeah. nudity in the shower. No, I mean, we don't see proper nudity, but I mean, I wouldn't want a kid to be watching and and the Black Love Killer as well, killing, knocking off these girls as well. Right. So that's well, kind yeah, of I strange, mean, I've seen but... way worse than that when I was... <laughs> like, but know, it's a right? different time, isn't it? It's a different yeah. era. And, in 68, you know. yeah, it would be a different time because, hell... Like in Psycho, what Psycho is nineteen sixty, and they everybody freaked out because uh, uh, Janet Lee flushed the toilet. You know, like yeah, and we see the toilet for the very first time. And <laughs> but, um, this was released um a month before the Sweet Body of Deborah, um, right? And the Sweet Body of Deborah was a, like a resounding success, and I think that delivered in all like the chills and the frills and everything. Whereas this didn't quite. So I can, yeah. you know, that's why if you're putting the two up, because you've got to like basically put them up against each other, being around the same time. Yeah. Um, that's why this film is generally, you know, regarded not that highly. But now this release is out there. Um, yeah. I think you could do a lot worse than watch this one if you're a Jalo fan or going into Jali. Now I do have, uh, so I have all those, the special features on this release. For anybody that's interested out there, so you get uh, you get a, a brand new scan and restoration in 4K from the original uh, 35 millimeter uh, camera negative. You get uh, two cuts: the original 97 minute uh, Italian and the 78 minute uh, English. 
uh, schoolgirl killer uh, edited version. <laughs> then you get a uh, commentary with uh, Eugenio Ercoloni, Ercoloni, Troy Howard, and Nathaniel Thompson, which – I mean, I, I like these guys' commentaries. They're great. They're great, man. They I think they work well together. And I um, highly re recommend checking out the commentaries. If you're really big into the Jalo, check it out. Um, so then um, Young, Evil, and Savage uh, feature. And it's basically an interview with Sally Smith, which is the – the poppy, cheerful, Jill. Short-headed girl, yeah. Short, yeah. red-headed girl that's like take no shit kind of attitude type of character. Um, then you got the, the last shower uh, feature with the interview with actress, Melissa Longo. Oh, and then you got, uh, um, uh, so I had a mixed up Schoolgirl killer is Eleonora Brown, which is the lead actress up here. And then uh, the young evil and savage interview with Sally Smith feature uh, then you got a video essay. It's called uh, Hello, Jalo. Death Finds Its Feet. A video es essay by Mike Foster and Neck uh, on Neck You Die and the Early Days of Jalo Film. And then uh, you got uh, Jalo Dawson, which I forgot to bring that up. Uh, Margariti. Antonio Margariti goes by Anthony Dawson. In a lot of films. Yeah. Yeah. So uh so it's called Jalo Dawson, a video essay by Pierre Maria Bocci on the lesser known films of Antonio Margariti. And then uh, ba uh aka Anthony Dawson, like I just said. And then uh then you get a promotional still gallery, you get inside sleeve artwork and a newly tran and a newly translated English uh subs, subtitles. So pretty stacked then because i didn't get a chance to see all of them yeah this um, this one's loaded this one this i think this one's the most loaded of the three so right yeah, yeah. that's naked you so, die yeah uh if you're really into jalo i wouldn't say start with this one if you've never seen a jalo before uh you might be put off but you know yeah, yeah. absolutely so that's i'm just that. gonna turn my heat off a minute that won't be sad Okay. But yeah, man, let me check the chat right quick. Uh, Sorry, guy. Are you good? Um, okay, Gore says, nope, not frozen. Uh, hey, take it easy, everyone. I'm going to go eat. Yeah. Cool, man. Oh, cheers, Keep for coming in. Yeah. 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 Always. Excellent as, I, as usual. I appreciate that, man. Thanks, man. Uh, Tasha says, hey, Gore, I'm great. And uh, she's giving shout-outs. Hey, hey's to everyone. Got Caveman. Caveman! Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, what's up, man? Hope you're please, feeling better. Please hit the like button. I'm glad you reminded me of that, man. So, you know, y'all can hit the like, like button or, you know, you could uh, do something like this. You know, a like button to the button. <laughs> so don't get it twisted. <laughs> but uh yeah. To the button. Yeah, do it to the button. But anyway, um yeah, where was I at? Okay. Yeah, everybody's saying hey. And we got okay. Corey's uh saying, sorry guys, I have to go and pretend to be social for a bit. Have a good one. Yeah, man. No problem. Yeah, man. thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah. Always. Um, K man saying, don't forget to vote for horror YouTuber of the month. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we got yeah. a video up. Check it out. Uh, check the channels out. And, you know, cast a vote. Check it out, man. It's only like a week to go as well. So yeah. make sure you got them in. Yeah, seven days, seven. Yeah. Well, close to seven. Almost, almost. We got eight days left, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Caveman saying, uh, 
Oh, Wild Wrangler, what's going on, man? Did I? Hey, did I, Wrangler. Did I skip Wild Wrangler? Yeah, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. The juice is loose. Oh man, yeah, I'm, I don't care. I'm, I'm not interested, man. I really ain't. Like, I know people are getting hyped for it. Some people are. Some people aren't. Man, I'm one of those. Some people, but uh, no, not see. for me. Caveman says, or Wild Wrangler says, love slap. Yeah, always, man. Uh, Caveman says, just chilling in the hospital still. Damn, man. Well, I'm, I'm hoping you get better, man. Wow. Yeah, I got better soon, man. Yeah. I didn't even know uh, knew you was in there, man. Yeah, Chris was saying, I think, about it as well. So, yeah, just keep your spirits up and yeah, man. as quick as you can, really. I'm pulling for you, brother. Uh, well, yeah, man. Sorry to hear that, man. Um, but, yeah. So, I guess, man, we're going to get into... Um, Naked, I mean, uh, not naked, <laughs> we just got into naked, you die, yeah, yeah. Uh, Death yeah. carries a cane. Uh, uh, what is what else is it? I'm going crazy here. Hold on, we got Death carries a cane 1973, or the alternate title Death Steps on the Edge of a Razor, which is the actual, I believe that's the Italian translation. It is, yeah, yeah. I actually, I like love that. that. I yeah. like that title more because Death Care is, is like, what the hell, you know? There is a, a Jalo actually called Love and Death on the Edge of a Razor as well, which okay. is come out roughly about the same time as well, which is strange. Yeah, but, um, what's that Iron Maiden song on uh, Living on a Razor's Edge? Yeah, <laughs> balancing on a ledge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, no, it is also released on video as. Uh, Several other titles, The Tormentor, Maniac at Large, The Night of the Rolling Heads, wow. and Devil Blade. <laughs> Devil this, Blade. I mean, this is kind of, this had no like DVD release at all. The only way you could watch this at one point was The Tormentor, I think it on Wizard Video Cut. Okay. Um, so this has been highly sought after for years. I think there may have been um a foreign blu-ray release um don't quote me on that but i think there was a, a foreign one a few years back but um so this is directed yeah. by Maurizio Perdue. and he also made a film in uh so like 4 years later called death steps in the dark and uh he made this other film called church hills leopards with Klaus Kinski is is in that damn thing uh Right, I've never seen that one, but I've seen Death Steps in the Dark, and it's pretty good for what it is. I think it's got you, Leonard Mann in it. And he also directed a film called uh, Raymond the Mexican in 1967. I believe that was his uh, that was his film debut. Uh, okay, directed. yeah, yeah. Um, and this is his first Jalo. As well, this so this is what I was probably thinking of. I probably screwed up on you, so like, don't you know, kill me or cuss me out in the comments about the naked you die. That might not be Margarita's first, so but uh, I thought it was for some reason. But. It might, it probably was his first Jallo, uh, not his first horror, but yeah, because yeah. he didn't do that many Jallo, so yeah, he probably you yeah. were right, I think, originally. Um, so this Maurizio Purdue, he wrote the screenplays for. For all of his films that he made. Um, and uh, you want me to go ahead and give the synopsis right quick? Or? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me, before I do that, I'll go ahead and catch the chat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get get better, caveman. Yeah. Um, Wow, guys, what's going on, man? Evening, hey, guy. Man. Yeah. yeah. What's up, man? Glad to have you here, man. And then, uh, okay, so I, I was, I'm tripping. I, I must have just been seeing. I seen, I seen he came in. I thought we had more in there, but, but that's cool. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get in the synopsis. So, so while on vacation in Italy, Kitty, she's like looking through this. Uh, this coin telescope binocular kind of deal that you pay for. And she's, you know, checking out the sites or whatever. And 
she sees a woman getting stabbed to death through a window. <laughs> so like it's yeah. like a typical, you know, it's a typical trope in Jalo, right? <laughs> like some somebody that's you know witnessing a murder, you know, and can't do anything about it right away, you know. But uh, well, it's it's Hitchcock, really, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Rear that's window. Exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you know, it goes on down the down the line. So many people did it. Um, so she's so she's she's scanning around. She's following the killer, and she's trying to see his. She's almost seeing his face, and then the damn thing goes out. She's got to put another That's coin right. in. Yeah, she she's can't struggling. See the killer's face. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, so she don't pay in time. The killer almost gets away the last thing she sees well no no it ain't that's later so anyway um but she sees like a, a dude that's selling chestnuts and uh like a chestnut vendor but it looks like right. um the killers actually like run into him as they've gone past right because, it's almost like, like the same setup as uh death walks at midnight almost yeah, yeah, you know. and you can see, yeah, definitely with the Susan Scott thing as well. Um, yeah, but she does the, work. The, the out, others, Navarro. Yeah, it's Navarro. Yeah, <laughs> Susan Scott. Um, but she does work out that the house number of this place where this girl get get gets killed is uh, number fifty seven, I believe. Yep. And there's yep. like a cleaning woman as well. The scene near the scene of the crime. Right. Um, this old woman. But uh. But yeah, so, um, so anyway, the I'm gonna go ahead and finish up. I know my synopsis are always kind of uh, clunky <laughs> or whatever. No but, man, they're uh, fine. Man. So go the killer it. uses a cane to subdue his victims. So he kind of hooks them with his cane, and then he and then he straight blades them. He slices their throat like while he's got them hooked. And uh, but so the cast. Of the film is uh, Nieves Navarro. She's playing Kitty. Uh, she's been she's been in the Death Walks films, which we recently reviewed. She was in Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. She's been in a ton of uh, spaghetti westerns. She was in another film called Kill the Poker Player. That's a Jalo western, by the way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, she was in, I'm um... interested in it. That's why I wrote it down because I haven't seen it. So. Um, she was also in All the Colors of the Dark as well. Yeah, All the Colors of the Dark. Um, and then you got Robert Hoffman, which he's playing Alberto. He was in a, a film called Spasmo that yes, I yeah. didn't like it the first time, but it kind of grew on me after the second watch. And then it, Oh, man, that's so good. I remember yeah. us covering that and you saying, you know, you yeah. really enjoyed it the next time. But, right. Yeah. yeah, that's when we did the Lindsay, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so then uh then you got George Martin is Inspector Marucci. Yeah, and you got yeah. uh Anuska Barova, and she's got a twin sister in this film, and the twin sister carries a cane and she's got a limp too. And uh from what I found out is this is her only film. I was surprised, man, because I think yeah. She pulls off the two because basically, yeah, the, the twin sister role is hard to pull off. I think in any film, yeah, you see it done, you know, with twins, with you know, guys as well, yeah. And I, I think she does an excellent job. And um, I was like floored to realize she didn't make another film. I was right. amazed at that. Maybe something happened. Who knows? You know, it was probably her. She probably just didn't want to do it anymore. You know, after this, because I mean, you, she gets completely naked, like early on in the film like maybe that was right. the issue you know or you know whatever yeah she but, she kind of does it a few times get naked and um she yeah, yeah there's no kind of her inner sister. hold back yeah, yeah. her inner no. twin yeah yeah because <laughs> this like we'll come on to it in a bit but yeah. there's a confusing scene where it doesn't even tell you she got a twin sister at some point and right. then we think it's the same girl sleeping with another guy but i'll come into all that right and then uh we got uh, Simone Andro, uh, which was in the the Death Walks films as well, and uh, I, think, actor, yeah. I think I got him down for uh, yeah. I don't think I added anything else. 
the Death Walks films and Lady Above Suspicion. He's in. He's been in other things. Uh, you got Luciano Rossi was also uh, in Death Walks at Midnight. He's a, and he's a crazy giggling uh, villain or whatever in that. He's also in Death Smiles on a Murderer. He's been in a. He's been in like seven, five to seven Django films. You know. The I old, was amazed, bro, because I yeah. got some of the jab. Just these are just the Jalo titles he's done, right? So okay. I'll, I'll reel them okay. up quickly. Go ahead. Close Circuit from 1978. Awesome. Um, we just got that one. I haven't checked it. Yeah, we. I've not checked it out. It yeah. looks awesome as well. But um, Prostitutioni, 74. Silence of Witness, 74. Dirk said Death Smiles on a Murderer. Two Death Walks films. Terror with Cross Eyes from 72 as well. What and, is um, it? Terror with Crossed Eyes? Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the Jalo film. <laughs> I think it might be... Um, it might have like porno... Elements, but don't hold uh, me to that. Okay. But it's definitely a Jallo. And, but um, that, I, I'm picturing like a, a cross-eyed killer or something. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why. Yeah, and it's not quite like it's hard to get hold of. I think I might have some muddy old print on a on a like a hard drive or something. Yeah. But he did do um, Date for a Murder as well, which is '67, which is kind of highly regarded. I've not seen it. Right. Um, but he's yeah, you know, unmistakable every time he's on screen. You also got um, oh, was you finished? I'm sorry. No, no, yeah, I finished. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you also got Rosa Toro Toros, who was the right. the main victim, the iconic victim in Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Yeah, and such an iconic shot that kid. Yeah, that that where she's in her like nighty or whatever, and the killer's on top of her in the night, and she's smoking a cigarette. You know. Um, yeah, man. Did you so realize as well she, the other film she's in as well? Okay. So she was in Footprints on the Moon. Oh, um, okay. Almost Human. Damn. Spasmo. Shadows Unseen. Eye in the Labyrinth. Obviously, Birds. And The Dead Are Alive. Okay. So she's cool. got high, you know, five or six. I knew that was her, though, Valley. from Bird, for sure. Oh, man, that's, that's a standout right. moment, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, man, sorry. I guess uh, let's go ahead and you can go ahead and take it away. I just want to cover all our like intros and uh, or synopsis and uh, cast members, yeah, man, yeah. Um, so like Dirk said, you know, um, so you got Kitty, she, she's this murder early on. Um, she got a boyfriend that's played by Robert Hoffman. I don't know what. Dirk thinks of him as an actor. I, I think his best film is Spasmo, but in this, he's I don't kind mind of just him. doesn't do nothing in this. He's got nothing. I don't to mind him in this, but with. that damn mustache. I don't know, man. That shit needs to go somewhere. That looked false as well, but um, <laughs> yeah, he's he's kind like of he's got no, do a porno, man. <laughs> there's no kind of fucking presence in him at all. He's just kind yeah. of got this blank, blank kind of expressionless face for an actor which is kind of strange but i think it kind of works though for the film because he's kind of you know you don't know where he stands yeah. because he's a crip he's he's sprained it he recently sprained his ankle he's so, set up early on as one of the main suspects i right. would just say that but um yeah but yeah like like you say you've got with, with this as well um so kitty like tells you know, the inspector now about this murdered girl and then it's all over the newspapers. There's certain shots in the newspaper, you know, iconic kind of um, shots. You've got the the blonde girl as well, the Dirk's head, Lydia, the reporter. She works at a local newspaper. She's kind of covering the murder. Um, but there's, you know, we see early on, right, there's a POV of the killer buying this newspaper from a newspaper stand. And they kind of use like a, a straight razor um, to cut, you know, cut like an image out, I think it is, from a newspaper or or to do something like that. It's kind of creepy. Um, and they limp and obviously and they're using a cane as well, which kind of goes, you know, with the, with the film. But what happens early on is you've got the chestnut vendor um, and everyone sort of connected with the crime scene seem to be getting off one by one. So... This guy, he's stalked. He's in his kind of rundown little place, uh, house in Italy. Um, but he's grabbed through the window with by the killer's cane. It's a great shot. 
um, and basically has his throat slit with a straight razor. Um, hey, I'm hold thinking... on just a second. I, I gotta, I gotta, yeah. I gotta take a break for a minute. Okay. You can continue on though, man, if you don't mind. No, if you want to just take a, like, you know, uh, put a do video a on or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do a reel. Okay. I had somebody at my door, sorry. That's all right, man. I was worried then. Got got me worried a bit there. <laughs> no, no, no. I just had somebody at the door. So. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh let me check the chat. Do you remember where you were at, man? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was at I um, just didn't expect that. So um, the chestnut Ben. No, it's all good, man. Yeah, these things happen, so no worries, man. Uh let's see. Chris has like come in on his break, I think, from work. Right. Let's see. I see Caveman says, uh, okay, he's talking to somebody. Here's Chris. He says, hi, I'll put the black gloves on and slap the like bazillion times. Yeah, man. Cheers, Appreciate man. It. Yeah. Uh, Caveman says, line of the night from Darren. Like most Jalo, they make no sense. <laughs> very, very true. Yeah. Well, yeah, very you true. Know, depends on some of them make pretty good sense. But, you know, kind of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're not. I mean, if you're going in to watch one of these, like a Agatha Christie. Yeah. Forget about oh, it. Oh, man, it, it'll fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> don't even don't even try to right. work out, you know, why yeah. any of this is like most of these films has just got no fucking logic whatsoever. And uh, let's see on my work break next Terror Tuesday, American Psycho. Okay. Oh man, I love that cool. film. Yeah. That's one we gotta cover at some point, definitely. Yeah. American Psycho. Oh yeah. One of my favorite films, that is, of all time, I think. You like the sequel? I've owned the sequel, <laughs> but I've I've never watched it to be honest, from what I've heard. Um I doubt if I ever will. Chris says I I, I have volume six set, but I'm catching up with volume four. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hopefully, then, when you watch all of this later, you'll you'll because there's one film I, I'm really excited to talk about. Uh, while saying great, I, I guess he's talking about the the real. I appreciate it, man. Let's see, yeah, all right, yeah. Sorry, man. Um, no, man, that's that's fine. Um, so you've got. Obviously, the three people who were connected to the scene of the crime start to get off one by one. Um, the chestnut vendor, 
I think I've said that. I don't know. Like basically, he's grabbed through the window, um, and he gets his throat uh, slit with a straight razor, and it's like sets the film up so well. Um, you've got Lydia, the reporter. Um, she's kind of like, um, what's the word? She's really not really helpful with them um, when it comes to like giving people's information or put the photo, you know, that they put into the newspaper. And she kind of seems a bit off off with the police um but there's a scene early on i don't know if this makes any sense because do you know when alberto takes naked shots of kitty when she's laid in bed i think she might be asleep in bed yeah i think that's just really to amp up the the suspect stuff you know uh, right so but it, then it don't go anywhere it don't no, go anywhere no. so they should have like did something to make it make sense a little bit try you know yeah because i had to go back the second time and watch that and think was there any kind of reasoning behind that but there is a reason for it so you can see nieves navarro yes. naked well on, that's on as good a reason as any um <laughs> i'm just saying that's why reasons. yeah yeah i mean yeah, it's, it's not only thing. reason it's also to hype up the suspect factor for Alberto. Well, I mean, it makes perfect sense when you put it like that. Why not? You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but so you've got Lydia, and we don't know at this time that she has a twin um, called Sylvia, I think it is. But um, because we see Lydia, like Lydia's trying to have basically have, have sex with um, another man. But then we realize it's her twin sister that's having sex. It's, I know it's all weird. It but, gets, um, gets convoluted a little. Yeah with the whole twin sister thing because you gotta but, watch twice but one yeah. of them has glasses on and her hair put up and the other one wears a can uh, carries a cane right so the one with the glasses <laughs> is kind of got this fucking feisty attitude as well like she yeah. just takes no fucking shit that's um, the other one it's the one with the cane that's like that yeah yeah sorry yeah yeah, yeah. so you got yeah. one good one and one kind of bad one Right, right. Uh, yeah, the actress like, uh, is, is amazing at playing. She's in her hair's down and everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And they both get naked, of course. But, um, right. So, yeah, so Kitty then starts basically to, like, suspect that Alberto's behind the killings um, because of his limp. And he, he acts really strange as well, asking, like, really uh, weird questions. And well, everything kind of in her head is, like, it's him, and she goes to leave him, but within, like, him finding out 30 seconds that she's going to leave him with a suitcase, they're fucking on the bed. Like, it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, get your ass in the bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know like, how that works, but... Yeah, um, turned her on, I guess, you know. Right, I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he, he um, had to get the man... He had to get the man shit on her, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, um... I think it would. I think Dirk would have realized. But do you know um, the old cleaning woman called Marta in this? So she tells Alberto that um, she knows who the killer is, and she wants two thousand pain or dollars up front. Did you realize that's the woman from your voice? Is a lock room on the bike? The old woman that goes like a fucking snail yeah. on the bike. I was like, shit, this is great. Like it goes up in my estimation just because of that. But um. So, yeah, she's kind of trying to get money now, this old woman. But later that night, the killer strikes, you know. Um, she's kind of stalked late, you know. Um, and, she, again, like, the killer's M.O. is, like, slit in the, the throat. Um, so that happens. Um, so, like I say, everyone's kind of connected with that original murder now is all getting killed. Um, they seem to be, like, playing a little bit with Kitty because – you know, she knows that they're kind of on her, but, you know, we don't know when they're going to strike at any minute, you know. Um, and then you've got the whole stuff as well, like with the, the dancer. So you've got Marco, who's, you know, got yeah. to keep up with his name. So Marco's Sylvia's boyfriend. And right. he's like, um, isn't he like a director or like a musical director with films and that? Yeah, and he's obsessed with the piano you know, yeah. like with music score, like, I guess he's like the music director, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think he does like music for films as well. Like it's hinted at early on. 
Right. Um, it's uh, played by Simone Andrew. Yeah, very, very good um, actor as well. But, I feel um, like he's, he could have been, like, really, really good. So, I, well, we, we recently did those Death Walks films and the, the three – Three uh, from uh, Ercole. Yeah, saying he he said that he could have been a great actor, but he was just too worried about partying and too worried about like the 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 lime life, you know. Like, right. Okay. Because he's French, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think he's a French actor. Yeah. I thought, yeah, he definitely had the look and and every and the, the ability to go far. Um, but he said he wasn't committed. He was more worried about partying. He'd show up late to set. And you know, he was, like yeah, that. I think I've read that as well. He's unreliable, yeah, right. yeah. Um, but you've got a scene where Alberto, Marco, um, and Lydia they kind of um invite this like dancer. I think she's doing some kind of audition for them. Um, right. so yeah, but, but um, there's like loads going on in this. I don't want to go too, you know, give too much away. Um, yeah, we, we won't go too deep. But, you know, are we uh, going too deep, you think? No, 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 no. I, don't, I just don't want to spoil anything. I'm just saying we're not going to spoil anything on it. Uh, just uh, No, no, exactly, yeah. I do, like I say, even when I mention, like, the death scenes, I'll, I'll say them in such a way that they're not going to be, you know. Yeah, not be vague about anything. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe send somebody um, on, say, Tweety Bird did it or something, you know. I don't know. I don't think it's that much of a spoiler to say about Magna, the dancer, though, does get killed. I don't think that's like no. too much of a spoiler. No, I mean, there's people um, who are going to die, man. It's a, it's a jalo, but, uh, you know. But that scene is amazing with a death scene where the killer, point of view, is under a fucking bed. And he's watching this dancer um, when she comes home. Um, and, yeah, the killer's under the bed. He's got the cane, got the straight razor. Right. Um, we see, like, I really dig the 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 way the killer does shit with the cane, like yeah. And, and, and then you're like you're watching it and you're like, well, this son of a bitch has got a cane, you know? How's he how's he catching up to these people? But it all makes sense. Oh uh, god, yeah. This, it all this makes is sense one in the that end. does make so, sense. Yeah. So it's like okay, well, cool. I appreciated that because I was thinking, there's no way this this uh dude dude's crippled. He's gonna catch these people, <laughs> like you know. Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, like, it makes well, sense how it works in the end. So exactly like all these jalo, but um, uh, but yeah, but he kind of changes his ammo, doesn't he? Because he suffocates her, even though he uses a straight razor after. Yeah. And, like slices the fuck out of her body. Um. But um, yeah, we've got this little subplot of um, Ma Marco and Lydia. They kind of. Early on in the film, he couldn't. He was kind of impotent, couldn't get it up. But oh, this yeah. time, they they have sex, and um, right. he seems to be okay. Like all all that's gone. I think he puts it into like stress and all that. Um, but this is great because to try and catch the killer now, they get Kitty. They as a prostitute to go undercover, and she's got the big old curly wig on. She looks fucking. Amazing, like you know. Yeah, you got the big, the the big wig, and yeah. Yeah, because at this point they're thinking the killer is actually like a sex maniac rather than the name. I, mean, I else, think you can you know? spoil that part if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I do gotta, I gotta take a quick, another quick. I'm sorry, man. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. If anyone's seen these films at all, um, just let me know what you think. I know Gizmo, I think Gizmo's seen a couple. Um, let us know in the comments what you think. The I will say the Bloodstained Shadow, which is going to be the next one, is by far the standout for me in the whole set. It's, it's an a fucking amazing film. Um, but that's not to say, you know, these other two are, are not bad at all. I think... Um, Naked to Die is like um, solid, like, you know, it went up in my estimation to where I like it a bit now. Um, this one's more of like a very solid, like seven, I would say. Right. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Sorry, man. I, uh, I got uh, the yard, the yard guy. So I was having to deal with it. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. No, that's fine, man. That's life, man, isn't it? Right. Um, 
but yeah, so the killer cuts out the newspaper article, you know, um, and there's this strange bag that, like, chestnut bag that was at, at the scene of the original crime and it keeps cropping up. Mm. So Kitty uses this bag um, when she's, like, posing as this prostitute. And I mean, like I said, I think it's an amazing scene. This is um, because she gets kind of freaked out when someone, like, goes to pay her 100 bucks. And then she looks in the back and she sees a cane. Yeah. And then I think we can spoil it, can't it? It's kind yeah. of hokey, but it but ends I think up it's... to be like, the chief of police, which is funny. Yeah, it turns out the chief of police trying to pick up a prostitute. So it's kind of like saying, you know, that the police can get away with whatever because they they, they yeah. got a whole sting set up. And just because it's the chief of police, they're like, oh, you know. Let it go. Like I think he said something he's, like, "Just make sure you put that hundred dollars on my desk in the morning." Yeah, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. Like I say, you know, just seeing her dressed up as a prostitute, um, and there's like many like naked scenes in this as well. I think Susan Scott is by far the best thing in this film, and it's not even close. I mean, her performance is great. I do like you know the the lady who does play the two sisters as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to word this now where I don't give too much away from there on him, but, um, let me, uh, catch a chat right quick. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Gizmo says, uh, he says, Hey everybody, uh, just about to drop a video on my channel. So I'm a bit off in the chat, but have it in the background. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. He says, uh, Texas. Okay, that's to Texas. Uh, let's see. He says, the blood stain, I did not like at all. I know. I'm, cane, I'm amazed at that. The cane, I have not seen, but I like the last of them. Oh, he's talking about uh, naked. Naked to die. Naked yeah. to die. Yeah. I am floored by the fact that he likes naked to die and doesn't like blood stain shadow. I'm yeah. Like yeah, blood stain shadow, man. I, I, I really like the I, he don't like don't torture a duckling though either. So he might not like the the rural right type of uh, giallo, you know, like knife of ice or um house of the laughing windows. Um, right, yeah, me like we're all different anyway, you know. I'm not yeah. saying anyone's right or wrong or anything, but um, like yeah, I can't. We're going to come into that one, but I can't wait to talk about that one as I said. Right. Um, but yeah, so um, you know this this guy comes along now, and the he, he's the maker of these bags, and apparently there's only ever one made. So uh, they kind of link it to, um, I think it's like um, a girl called Ines Ferretti, um, and she's the one who bought it, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, so yeah, um, you see a photo of like the two sisters and the boyfriend. Um, when they kind of, I'm trying to, I gotta get this right now. So she was in there buying chestnuts when the like killer struck this, I think it's Innis Ferretti. Um, that's right. And then she sees a photo of the two sisters and the boyfriend and like flees in terror. That's why I gotta get speed on this. Oh, thing. you're, you're on about, uh, what's her name from Bird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's... Yeah, that's her um her name in the film, I think it's like Ines Ferretti. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's I didn't know her name in the film, but that's the chick from Bird with Crystal Plumage. The Yeah, that's the one. That's the one, yeah. Because we're wondering Rosa Toros. Just... Yeah, yeah. Did she like we're wondering, did she see the killer? Um, yeah, she looked at the picture and she she says like like she acts like she's seen the killer in that picture, but you don't know. And there's you know, only there's, four people. If you pause that picture people. as well, there's four people yeah. it could be. Um, right. Again, okay, that's the minor spoiler. But um, yeah, so there's a scene with her as well when she's driving. Mm. Um, again, can we give that away, do you think? Yeah, I think we can. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird that that one, like if you really think about it, because I mean, you know why the hell would the killer do that? Because I mean, we'll just we'll just leave it pretty vague. I, I don't want to spoil. Okay, okay. Uh, but but why I will would the killer? That's a great shot. Of, yeah, yeah. It's a of, great of, shot. Of, it's a great. 
the everything that's done. Yeah. But it's it's kind of weird that a killer would do that, considering how it, what, what he's doing, you know, or she's doing, and uh, you know what I mean. I Without something really standard. bad happening to to the killer as well. So. Yeah, I think it's one of the standout scenes yeah. of the film. But it definitely um, is. I said the tra- it's in the intro. I mean, if yeah. you go back to the intro, you can definitely see which one it is. Uh, but, but yeah, like you say, um, again, I, I'm pretty much reading this now and, and thinking what I can see and what I can't. But um, again, we see another shot of Susan Scott naked, um, which is great. Um, but how how are we going to say this now? So. Pretty much you get three of the main characters, or two of the main characters and this girl, they kind of go to investigate uh, this dance school. I think Mm -hmm. it's best because all the girls murdered are linked to this dance school, they find out. Um, So, yeah, after that, I don't know if uh, you want to go. Yeah, I don't want to go no further, really. (laughs) So, yeah, so... So we'll leave it like they break into this school. Um, they kind of get stalked by the killer. Um, and then we'll leave it at that. There's got but some there great is, stalking scenes. There's, there's a, a great, great scene in Bolton. There's a Bolton. great greenhouse. I was going to say, yeah. Oh, we've got to make greenhouse that. scene with the killer stalking. And uh, it's done yeah. done really well. I, I, I really got a big appreciation for. Nieves uh, Navarro, man, big time. So you've got the killer is stalking like this, we will say victim or would be victim, mm-hmm. round this greenhouse, and it right. is fucking amazingly shot. Like, um, and they kind of bang on the windows and using the cane to smash the windows in. It's it's brilliant. Um, but I will say about the reveal with it. We're not going to mention what what it is. But what's your thoughts on the actual reveal without giving too much away? Did was you surprised by it, or just did you did you have an inkling it was who it was? Yeah, I mean, I didn't figure it out. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't figure. It I out. didn't. I didn't figure uh, this one out. I I thought it was somebody else, but uh, but the the motivation is kind of weird. I got it. It's kind of it weird. doesn't. Makes sense. Really. Yeah, the motivation is right. weak as hell. I'll, I'll give. I'll say that. So, this one is going to get a six out of ten for me. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, because this originally on my letterbox was an eight, eight to ten, but yeah. because of the weak sort of ending, that didn't make sense. I don't think. Or, or like, the motivation I it down. makes it no doesn't sense. Make, no, it doesn't. I dropped it to a seven, eight to ten, but it's not okay. to say I don't like the film because I yeah. really do. I think right. like she's amazing, Susan Scott, in this one. If, um, if the if the the reason was better, this could be could this could go higher for me. But, yeah, it'd definitely go up a point if if the ending was better. Yeah. Um but it's still I would say a very effective jar. It's better it's better than average, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could do a lot worse than watch this one. And this this guy didn't make many films at all. I think he only made what, like four. Is that right? I'm or, not sure. I know he. No, I'm made... thinking. I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm thinking of the Bloodstained Shadow. Thing. Oh, think... you're yeah, Antonio Bido. You're thinking yeah. of yeah. Yeah, Bido only made four um, films total. But he did I make. Think... I think we mentioned earlier. This guy made um, Death Steps in the Dark. That's worth checking. Eh? Don't okay. go into that expecting a. You know, it's not as good as this. Well. You say no, okay. no, it's got um Leonard Mann in it who who was um he played, I think he was in a few Plistesky films. He was yeah. certainly in um, he's been in a couple of Jallo actually. He was in Night School, which is kind of an American Jallo. Um, okay, but yeah, I've got a few little things, not too much on this one. I couldn't find out a lot. Um, well, let me uh, let me check the chat right quick, Let's yeah, because I think Gizmo's got something about don't torture a duckling on, you know? yeah. Um. Oh, okay. He says, "I I like Don't Torture, but I don't think it's as great as many think." Bloodstain was born and as hell, and the ending we all saw coming. It was kind of the same twist as in Don't Torture. Uh, I disagree totally. <laughs> yeah, like... I gotta disagree on that one because I can't say it without spoiling it. 
so I'm not going it's to go there. It's an hour because we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. It's just under two hours, and to yeah. me, it fucking flies by. Well, I feel like uh, I feel I like they could have trimmed maybe 20 minutes. I feel like uh, I didn't get I didn't get that because I because I yeah. thought it needed. I do like the, the time. tone and the mood, and and I feel like it's kind of pairs well with like House of the House with the Laughing Windows. Like honestly, know? man, those two. Like you, those and it's two the same actor, too. You know? It's the same name. I think Stefano's the same name as well, isn't it? It's well, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get into that yeah, here yeah, in a minute. Yeah. So we haven't even got into that yet. Right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Gizmo said, "I hated the okay, yeah." He said, "I hated the POV shots in the film. Also, they also they used them for probably ten minutes of the running time. We were three people who almost fell asleep watching it, but still better than the remake of Roadhouse. <laughs> well, at least it's got that going for it." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, surprised, yeah, we're, we're 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 about to get into it, man. Um, yeah, I don't want to go on it. We'll we'll finish up with uh with this one first with uh death care. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't got too much, but this was actually the fourth highest ranked Jallo for 72, 73 year. Um, yeah, it took in two hundred and seventy nine million lira. Um. But the highest being full cheese, don't torture a duckling, which took 1.25 billion lira. So, I mean, poles apart, really. Yeah. Um, uh, Troy Hayworth didn't particularly like um, Robert Hoffman's performance, I did read. He mm. said he's wooden, which I completely agree with, I think. Unless you see Spasmo, which I think is his, by far his better film. Yeah, I would, um, I would say that, but... I I think it works for what the film's trying to do, like with the character. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, he's kind of like, you know, it's a question mark character. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got another few little bits and pieces. Like, um, so this was shot in January of 1973. Oh, shot in 72, sorry, and, and opened in January of 1973. Um, so I've got you know Susan Scott's uh, best role, uh, being Death Walks at Midnight. I don't know if you would say that. What is it? Do you think Susan Scott's best performance is Death Walks at Midnight rather than this one? Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, and the older woman with the, the J and B, I forgot to mention her. I mean, that's okay, hilarious. yeah, 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 the old woman with the J and B. And she's like got a switchblade and shit. <laughs> like it's pretty, it's pretty funny. But, uh, but I think um, Dirk said earlier on about um, Susan Scott. The she did the two westerns, didn't she? Like Jalo westerns, Kill the Poker Player. Yeah. Um, and he also did two Ringo films for uh, Tazari. Sorry, if Ringo. I'm, yeah, and the Return of Ringo. Sorry if I'm overgoing what Dirk said. Um, no, no. But um, yeah, you got Luciana Rossi in this as well. Um, he plays the Twitch giggling killer in Death Walks at Midnight. Right, but it's kind of, kind of a big crossover between those films, you know, with the cast. Um, so yeah, but his like best role, I think uh, Troy Hayward said, is uh, Death Smiles on a Murderer, and I completely agree as well with that. Um, yeah. With Clay Kinski, that's a mad Joe D'Amato film. Um, but he did do two films with um, Fulci as well. He did Contraband. Um, and he did play like a policeman in City of Living Dead, which I couldn't, I didn't even remember. But it's like 20 seconds, blink and you'll miss it type. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we haven't you mentioned said, much about the music either. You did um, say Death Smiles on a Murderer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's in that as well. That's, yeah. a, that's a great one. But um, the music was done by Roberto. Pragdiado, um, who'd also done Smile Before Death, Silvio Amato, mm -hmm. um, not long in 72. Um, this theme here is kind of overused, I think, as the film goes on. It is used a lot. It does get a little redundant, for sure. But he also did the music for uh, Dragonfly for Each Corpse, the Paul Nashi film. Okay. Um, he does like the song over the end credits, I believe. Um, but he was famous for doing like a foreign version of America's Got Talent. Um, yeah, I heard funny. about that. Yeah, I heard yeah, about yeah. That. I think I think uh, the Eugenio Ur Ercolani is that his name? 
Oh yeah, that's sorry. That's the guy who mentioned it. Yeah, comments, Eugenio but... Ercolani was saying, uh, saying that or whatever on the commentary track. He's from Italy, and he knows a ton of shit about Italy. So. Oh man, go and check out like yeah, check out that with... commentary track. Like on all three, yeah, of yeah. Them, those those I three mean, guys are on it. There's a I lot of interviews do. as well on YouTube. But like the interviews are great. Obviously, Troy like yeah. been on our channel. Right. And um, check all those guys out. They're amazing. Nathaniel Thompson is another yeah, one. Yeah, Nathaniel Thompson. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've got anything else though, Dirk, on that one. Um let's see. Uh did notice like on the commentary track though, the the it's weird. Did you notice it on this release? I know what you're gonna say. Where it over talks. They yeah. overlay. They overlay on for like, Yeah. So I don't know if vinegar seconds. syndrome. He's gonna send another disc, or what? But uh, I mean, I, I'm fine. I mean, that, I'm I'm honest. good, but I'm saying somebody might gripe about it, and I've not heard no one say about it. Have you heard anything? I haven't heard nobody say nothing about it, but I'm saying I, I thought, can see where somebody complains to vinegar syndrome. Yeah, yeah. And then they start sending discs out to people, you know. Right, because I thought it was um like a fuck up on my player or something. Because I had to no, like, double it's check, not. but yeah, it's definitely. Two two tracks of them talking and they're overlaid on top of it. Yeah, it's it's only for like 20 sec 10, 15, 20 seconds, something like that. Yeah, it did um, get kind of confusing what they were saying though. It did, yeah, yeah. Um but um but yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's so pretty I, much what I got for that one. Yeah. So I give it a you know, like I said, I give it a six out of ten. Um it's it's good, not great, but I'm not I'm not uh I'm not uh, sad about this box set at all. Like I like all three of these films. So, right. So I um, yeah. Like I said before, it's gone down a point for me because I originally put it as eight out of ten, but it's gone down to seven. So, yeah. Right. Um, I can uh, I can read off the special features, but I'll catch the chat right quick. I see there's a. I think Gizmo said something in here. Um, says sorry, Darren. Ask the chat when you were away what or if we have seen them. So I started spraying shit. Yeah, yeah. Because when Dirk was away, I asked, you know, if oh, anyone okay. had seen the film. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, no no worries, man. Uh, so on this uh, edition, Death Carries a Cane features uh, this uh, Vinegar Syndrome release. It's got a newly scanned and restored in uh, 4K from its 35 original ne uh, camera negative. Uh, it's presented in its original Italian mono soundtrack with optional English subs, as well as its English mono dub soundtrack. That's got a, a, a great commentary from uh, Eugenio Ercolani, Troy Howarth, and Nathaniel, Nathaniel Thompson. Um, it's got a special feature, A Life in the Suite. In interview with editor Eugenio Alabiso. Uh, it's got promo stills, inside sleeve art, newly uh, translated English subs. And that's all this one has. This don't have a ton of features, but... No, it's kind of hard to get any information about this one as well. Because right. in my books, it's kind of like really not You much can see how it. scratchy the trailer is that uh, on the intro. Like, is that how it looked when you watched the film? Um, because it's real scratched up pretty bad, like that. Just the clips that I found on uh, to to make an intro, but right. Oh, you mean like off a trailer, basically? Um, right. yeah, no, that's, it looked it looked pretty good for what it was, you know. That's uh, Death Carries a Cane. That's definitely a recommend for me, right. But what you'll find with this box set is, for me anyway, it's kind of Naked to Die is a six. Um, sort of the last one's definitely like a seven. Um, but this, the Bloodstained Shadow is like by far the best film of the set. Um, by a mile, I'd say. But um, yeah, I can't wait till we talk about this one. Yeah. I don't know if you want to. Um, go through like a synopsis and that yeah 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 i'll go ahead and get in this is uh, my fucking jam though this film 
right? This, this yeah, I, I I really like this one, man. I know a lot of people don't like it. Um, I like the 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 setting. It's like, um, kind of got similar vibes as like Who Saw Her Die or um, Don't Look Now, like the Venice kind of setting with the water canals and. Uh, yeah, which surprisingly is only used in like two or three scenes. I read. Yeah. Um, they actually shot a lot of it like outside of Venice. Right. But you can tell that the main two or three shots when I think they go back to um, again we're coming to it, but they go back to one of the characters' mother-in-law or uh, stepmother, I should say. And um, yeah, you see some some Venice shots as well. Yeah. So it's uh. So I will I will uh, go ahead and try to pronounce the Italian title because yeah. I feel like I can do this one. <laughs> so I you know you I don't can. do all of them, but I feel like I could do this one. So it's Solamente Nero. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. easy enough, and that that uh, equals uh, only blackness. So um, the the director Antonio Bido, he's like a huge fan of Argento. He said so and. So you got to think only blackness, right? Like think about deep red, you know, like or tenebrae. You no, know I'm saying tenebrae. deep red, like uh, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah, or tenebrae. But but tenebrae is after this, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So deep red, definitely. I feel like you know what I mean with the yeah. only blackness stuff. But uh, and so rural jalo, it's got a. a the in, the intro mu the the music alone is similar to Goblin. It's Stilvio Cipriani, and they were supposed to get Goblin instead, but uh, I think there was money issues or something. No, God, like Goblin did do it. They do it as well. They did. Uh, yes, Cipriani did um, the main, like you know, composed the main stuff, but Goblin did play it as well. Yeah, so Goblin are on the same track. Okay, well, from what I found out, it was inspired from Goblin. So I don't no, know. no, uh, Claudio Simonetti was actually did play on this same track. Oh wow! Was, yeah, it's, I think well, it we got we got just... conflicted uh, information here. So like, I don't know, but uh, no, yeah, because I was um, just to say like I'll mention it a bit later, but um, I seen an interview with Antonio Bido, and he did say he did confirm that. Goblin were part of the, the score. Okay. So 1978, Bloodstained Shadow. Um, it, and the working title was uh, Behind the Corner, The Terror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can tell how much of a fan I am, right, of this. Because, look, I've got the, the old DVD there. Yeah. I've got the Blu-ray there. Let me see. Hold on. So okay, got you got the Blu-ray there. Film. Yeah. yeah, there's the old DVD, which okay. I love. Yeah. And, of course, I got the new one. So, I right. mean, this is high fucking top right. tier Jalo. Yeah, man. Uh, I wouldn't say top tier for me, but I would. Uh, I mean, it's pretty good. I like it. Um, so, Antonio Bido, Bido, this is his second Jalo. Uh, his first one was uh, Watch Me When I Kill. Yeah, from a and, year uh, previous, yeah. And the alternate title that to that was, uh, uh, what is it, Cat with the Jade Eyes? That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, surprisingly, that film did a lot better than this. This was regarded as a flop. Um, right. And Watch Me When I Kill was regarded, like, did, did really well. But, I mean, if what happened now in, like, with the internet and these new releases, Antonio Bido said that people just love the Bloodstained Shadow a lot more. But right. at the time, it's weird that it didn't do as well. It did yeah. about half the money of, of Watch Me When I Kill. So you got... So this, this guy, Stefano, returns to his hometown, an Italian village off the coastline, very much in the country, away from town, very much in the same vein as House with the Laughing Windows. Um, I feel like it has that same kind of tone. Some of that, and it's got the same actor from uh, Lino Capoliccio. Yeah. Um, I, like, I was so amazed by that, 
that yeah. I know the House of the Lapping Windows is set in the 1940s, yeah. but this could almost play like a fucking sequel on it. I know technically, right. it can, you know, it can't. But well, that's that's what they were saying too, though. That like like Fulci would had. I, I was listening to to them say talk about it on the commentary track that Fulci had had went on because people were thought that Fulci was doing these rural jallos and being very stereotypical. And, and Fulci was like, no, there's really places like this in the world. And that's yeah, what he's trying yeah. to show people that there are places like this in Italy that are not in the big city. So in this one, what I like about it probably the most is you, they're getting away from the American, uh, uh, you know, stranger in a strange land scenario yeah, yeah it's an italian but he's from the big city but he's originally from there when he was a kid you know right. so he comes back to the big city he's trying to relax and there's these murders that are happening and there's a, a woman that's strangled just like a young girl from his childhood she's strangled the same way um it was years ago like i said when he was a child and his memory's starting to slowly come back as the film right. goes on. So we get yeah. that in so many Jalo, Jally. Um, but I'm hoping I'm explaining this good enough, like to to set the film up before we go into it. But uh, so it's got Lino Capoliccio, uh, his name and his name Stefano in this one, just like it was in House with the Laughing Windows too. <laughs> so exactly, it's um, very similar. Yeah, and then you got. St Stefania Cassini, which uh, she's Sandra. And if you don't know who she was, she was in, if you don't know who she is, she was in Blood for Dracula. And of course she was in Suspiria. Like she's the, um, I can't think of her name, but she's in Suspiria. She's like the, the, she befriends uh, the main Jessica, actress. Jessica yeah, Harper. Jessica guy, Harper. Yeah. Character. Uh, and then you got Craig Hill playing Don Paolo. Uh, he did a bunch of comedies and spaghetti westerns. Um, uh, Massimo Serrato is uh, Count Mariani. And oh man, that actor is fucking. Yeah, he's amazing. supposed to be a really great actor. I don't know if I've seen him. Like, oh, you've seen him. You, do you know the priest in uh, Don't Look Now? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And I mean, that's by, like an amazing performance. But I mean, if right. you actually look into what he's done. Um, because he does, which we'll come on to, he does play a, a really like bad character in this. But um, yeah, yeah, he was in Killer None. He was in The Omen. Okay. He was in Autopsy. Um, who killed the prosecutor and why? The Great Swindle and the Ten Victim, which was like the the guy is an amazing character actor that was right. well known all over Italy. Um, and I think his best performance is Don't Look Now. But this. For what for when he's on screen and what he portrays, which we will say in a bit, I yeah. think he does a great job. He's one of the standouts. Yeah, he's he definitely makes me want to jump through the screen on his ass, you know. Yeah, yeah, we'll come into that because I think we can sensibly, you know, talk about that. Yeah, and then then you got Juliet Maniel is uh, Miss Elizabeth Nardi, and then you got Gianfranco Bulo is. Uh, I don't want to say because I might spoil it, but he's in the film. <laughs> but he was also in Watch Me When I Kill as well. Yeah, yeah, right. And um, so I know that Stefania Cassini, she was in like her probably, Suspiria is like her big, big film. Yeah. But yeah. she was also in a film with Robert De Niro called 1900. Right, which she plays, uh, yeah. I know, I know the scene you're going to mention, I think. Uh, well, I'm not, I uh, just... The director was Bernardo Bertolucci. And yeah. uh, she was also in, I think she was also in, uh, is that right? No, I think that's all I got on her. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to mention, because that scene with, like in that film, last film you mentioned, with Robert yeah. De Niro, she's actually giving two men a hand job in the one scene. Okay, I've never seen film. the film. I was I've, just, never, right? I've never seen it, but I've read yeah. about that scene. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, do you want me to go through it or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but 
Yeah, I'm kind of. Yeah, we'll talk about it later, I guess, about the goblin thing because I that's crazy. I've got yeah, I, I will back that up as well because I'll I'll okay. give it, I'll give information I got written on the film after as well. Right. Um, that's just messing me up because the info I got is so wrong. If that's the case, no, so, you can know. you can tell though. I thought you could tell. You could definitely tell straight away. It sounds just like it. That's why it I was is. like, damn, it yeah. sounds very much like it. But, yeah, it was honestly. It was a collab between the two. Um, okay. They actually right. played the music, and I think um, uh, Cipriani. I dig it, actually, man. That's yeah, cool, Cipriani really. wrote the music, and I think they composed. Oh, they played the music. Something yeah. like that. I mean, the, the music in the film, man, is is fifty percent of the film. It's 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 a fucking Dario Argento film to me. It's got that feel. It's got the music. It's it's. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could say if this was if this was a lost Dario Argento film, I think this would be fucking. Highly regarded, you know. Um, but yeah, we'll come into all that. But um, I'd put this uh, over the car player any day and day. So. Oh, it's better than the car player, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, yeah I, I'll come into that. I'll come into that because it is top tier for me. But, um, but yeah, that's uh, kind of set it up. Hopefully, I set it up proper so we can go. Yeah, ahead and man. Yeah, dig yeah. Into it. Um, <laughs> so I do want to mention the opening again, which. Yeah. Um, I love the start of this because it's done so differently to your normal Jalo films. So right. we get this young girl. Um, she's being strangled. She grabs like the pages from a book. Um, but it's done in such a way with it's done in slow motion and it is fucking amazing. Um, and kind of the jazzy type goblin score kicks in as well. Um yeah. And it sets up the film for me in such a high way. And I think it just continues to get better and better as it goes on. So we got Stefano. He's riding the tr this train. Um, he meets this girl, Sandra. Um, she's like this attractive woman. She, she's like a painter. He gets to talk to her and all that. Um, but they end up coming onto this small island um, where he's going to meet his brother. But it's done in exactly the same way as Hayes with the laughing windows, where, you know, Stefano gets off this boat and goes to meet Salmi, the little, you know, midget kind of guy. Right. It's almost people, exactly the same. People looking out of the shutters. and Yeah, know. which happened in this as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Same um, shit. Same kind of thing. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's like the two of them just work so well together. But, yeah, uh, you know, if, if anyone wants to do a blind double feature not seeing them two, then... I, I would definitely put them. House with the Laughing Windows way higher, though. I would. It's higher. It's uh, Whether I say it's way higher, because Hayes is a... I think Hayes is almost a 10 anyway. Yeah. This this uh, will come on to, but I'd say this is a strong 8. You are, you are right. It is better, but... Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, and it's a religious... You could say this is a religious type jello. Yeah, well. yeah. That's why it's a different well subject as, matter than don't torture a duckling. Like it's I not, was gonna say this is why yeah. it's been compared to because right. the priest element. Because right. there's a scene in Don't Torture a Duckling as well, where you've got the priest is playing football with these young boys. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene in this where these slightly older boys are playing football, but the priest is watching. Yeah, and you can't honestly. I right. don't know if that was a whole match. It must be a whole match. I feel like it's a hat tip to Fulci. It's got sure. to be. It yeah. has to be. And this film has got to be a hat tip to, to Argento as well. Oh, no sure. I mean, that. he's already come out and said that. Like, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. He said, I haven't watched a bunch of these. These, And he was a very young director, too. You got to understand when he made Yeah, this. yeah. So. Yeah. Very underrated. Very competent director that will come into yeah. But um, so to get in the early part of the story, then so you've got Don Paolo is this Stefano's brother, he's the local priest. Yeah. Um, and they're kind of in this cafe now, they're meeting up, you know, after a while. Um, but we see this strange woman, like, and uh, this young boy or young man kind of goes up to her and gives her an envelope of money. Um, but what we find out is that she's a medium who like practices all these strange kind of rites. Um, yeah. 
and it's linked with like three characters um one being like a doctor who's like a rich and, he, and he's a bit of yeah, a gambler these, these locals are in in the occult pretty much yeah yeah you know um they kind of have these like sit-ins where they do seances right. so yeah you've got him he's a rich he's a gambler he's an atheist you've got um i think there's two more characters there's like a midwife as well um but the the backstory with the doctor as well is that he killed his wife years ago and kind of because he knew people in high places he kind of got away with it yeah. so but it's kind of quite funny because as the priest is telling his brother this, the doctor is actually behind He overhears him. it, yeah. Yeah, which, like, and I mean, the, the scene is great because the whole thing with this medium woman as well, I, I don't know about you, but it kind of puts you on edge from, from the start. Like, exactly like Haste with the laughing windows where... Everybody's you know, in this town gonna is kind of, yeah. kind of, you know, dirty as hell. Like yeah, and all they all together kind they of all stick you know. together and, and very, all that. very uh very clandish, you know, tight right. knit. And this guy is from the big city, like that's his hometown originally. But you know, yeah, I already said yeah. That. no, but no, um, but another member of this like cult, if you want to call him that, is um Kane Padratti, um, who's played by the guy Dirk just said. Um, let me get his name there. It's uh, the guy from Don't oh, Look Now. It's not coming to me straight away. Oh, Massimo Serrato. Um, so he plays this pedophile, basically, this homosexual. Yeah, yeah it's, but, it's, it's blatant. It comes out and says it pretty much. Right. I mean, and he, this guy is the lowest of the low. Um, one of the women who's got a young boy, she goes to see the priest and she tells Paolo, you know, the priest, Basically, my boys, you know, this guy's trying it on. This Kent is trying it on with my son four times. So he says to him, you know, I'm going to basically, uh, you know, go and have a chat uh, yeah. and see how that goes on. But that's a little bit later, but I don't want to get too far into it. But um, so there's an amazing scene early on there. So we've got Paolo. Um, there's a big storm during the night. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think this is fucking amazing. This scene it is great scene, completely man. sets the film up because you've got the the kill with the girl as well, which I thought was done great in slow. You can see the this. there's an image of the scene right to the right. Yeah, yeah, the right corner at the top. Yeah, yes. um, you've got people. You've got to see this film. I know I keep banging on about it, and I don't want to like over like tell people to watch this. Yeah, well, but, I mean, if you're really, I wouldn't say for the casual. You know, you know, if you like anything Argento does, then yeah, I would recommend it and highly. Um, or like the rural type giallo. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? um, not everybody likes the rural rural uh, giallo. The the country. Oh, I do, I do. Um, away from so the you've big got, city type stuff. Yeah, so this medium who we seen earlier on in the film in the cafe, yeah. So she's yeah. attacked and strangled by this figure in black where you can see there above Dirk's got the image. Um, and it's outside the church. So Paolo witnesses all this from his window. Um, but he doesn't see the killer's face. So basically then he shows like, you know, his brother comes back. You know, and again, we're thinking, shit, he's been out in the rain. I think one of his friends or one of his um, church co-workers comes back at the same time. Yeah. Um and like they're kind of seen as maybe you know they could have been responsible. That's that's kind of well, I think it was kind of set up. Yeah, but, you um, see the rain all over his boots and oh man, it's it's just an incredible scene. And like again, we say with a lot of these films, you know, he takes the brother and, and this um church like friend out into the rain, and of course the body's gone. Um and he, there's no explanation. He says, well, I've seen this, you know, woman being murdered and all right. that. Um, but then we see a shot with the, the like, of someone, like, obviously the killer in black gloves. And they're frantically searching through this medium's, like, office. They're trying to find something. They come across this disc and these book notes, I think it is. Um, and then Paolo starts getting all these messages then from the would-be killer or... He doesn't know who it is at this point. Um, 
And they send him like this really weird photo of Paolo, his brother, and their mother, like the family photo. Um, and like just sending him, like basically saying, you know, he's, he's gonna, like, if he says anything, he's gonna fucking kill him, you know, in so many words. But right. the message is just to keep getting worse and worse as it goes on. Um, but the killer is is also sim like the the killing with that woman is also done in a very similar way to the young girl at the start of the film, so the police are kind of figuring out this is the same killer. Um, Stefano Stefano keeps getting these flashbacks. We don't know what they are. It's, um, it's we think it's him as a little boy. Yeah, yeah. Keep showing him, but you know that that was that's one thing that's kind of weird about a flashback. Like in movies, like why would it show when when you think back on a, on a flashback, you wouldn't see yourself in the flashback? <laughs> you know, that's the only right, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, that's I maybe mean, picking a little bit, but uh, right. You know, yeah, but um, yeah. So, but he does see know, the somebody strangling this young girl in in the yeah. flashback, and he's I trying mean, to make sense of it. He's trying to remember uh, as the exactly. Film goes yeah, on. it's kind yeah. of childhood trauma that's used again in a lot of these yellow films right um the part that i jumped that i said a little bit too soon earlier was um paolo goes to visit then you know the woman complains about uh tank Petrazzo, but paolo goes to visit him um and it's really weird because you've got this young boy playing the piano and he's kind of a little bit close to him and you yeah can that's a very just... disturbing kind of scene I yeah, it's. I mean, the actor who plays the part I mentioned is it just absolutely plays the part. Serato. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, um, I can't he see plays that role good, but I, I, I just want to jump through the screen and kill that son of a bitch to be. I was going to say I can't see anyone who would play it as well as he right. does. Well, because... then he did his job though, because he's he's doing what he's supposed to do as an actor. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because uh, hasn't he got like um, a house guest or like someone like a, a an older boy staying with him? Yeah, it makes you wonder to... that he like did he groom him? Yeah, like, yeah, because he's you know tying I mean? it on with him. He says, "Oh, he doesn't want to be alone." Right. Um, because obviously, Paolo turns around and says, "Look, you know, I'm not happy you're like molesting these boys." Um, right. So he basically says, "Go on, just get it." You know, I don't want to speak to you again. Yeah. Um, but. Another thing I will say as well is, um, you know, you've got the, the whole strange town scenes, which you've got in Haze of Laughing Windows, as Dirk said, you know, people are putting their shutters down and yeah. that kind of... But the music, did you notice the music to that, right, is weird. It's actually lifted, I think, from the opening to pieces. You know when the little boy in pieces kills his mother? Yeah. And you've got, he's putting that jigsaw up, puzzle back together yeah the killer you go back and listen to that and go back and listen to this scene as well and it's almost to me it's unmistakable but i don't know i've never heard anyone else bring that up yeah but i didn't put that together for, for if you've sure. got a chance to it down the line or whenever yeah, I will. Chance, it definitely feels like a, i mean yeah it's i mean like i said i mean i keep beating the damn dead horse over here but it, it sounds like gobble like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good dead horse to beat, man, because the same track to this is just like something like, well, Tenebrae can obviously come after it, so you know, yeah, you've it's, got it's that as very well. similar to Tenebrae, yeah, it's got that jazz, but it came uh, after this, so yeah, dance weird, type, yeah. just amazing sim score, uh, you know, but yeah, I'll come on to that in a bit, um, right, so. You know, Stefano then he bumps back into this Sandra, um, the young, attractive woman from earlier on the train. They strike up some kind of relationship, then they I think they're kind of friendly at first, and then yeah, she wants to show him he, she wants to show him her belly chain. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we do actually get, you know, a, quite a bit of nudity in the one scene. Yeah. Again, which we'll come on to, which I think is possibly the worst in the film. But um, but Paolo still keeps getting these kind of messages, you know. Um, yeah. I think the next one is um, it said the past and your fate are linked with your death, or something like that. And I mean, they just keep getting creepier. I know I've said it, but they just keep getting creepier and creepier. Um, 
so we see like Sandra goes back there and she goes to see her um like I think it's um not mother her stepmother but that's when we see all the waterways of Venice because the picture goes in like you know the Stefano character does end up going back to Venice for a while during the film um and all that's great but to me it, it wasn't as good as like don't look now because the camera didn't seem as I don't know if you picked up on this, but the camera didn't seem as bright in those scenes where the sunlight and all that, it don't look now, it looks like a million dollars in this. Yeah, it's yeah. It's kind of muted a little bit. I don't know if yeah, why. It and it, it's, it has that same kind of, almost like that same kind of filter as House. I know we keep talking about House with the Laughing Windows, but it feels... You've got, you've got to really mention that film yeah. all the time. Julian. It feels like it's got that same kind of layered filter that House with the Laughing Windows has. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And some of the yeah. not all of them, but some of them for sure. Um, it's undeniable as well if you watch the two back to back or even you know within a week of each other, but um, yeah, yeah. So, and I know Gizmo said he didn't like the POV shots, but I I really love all that. Um, so you get the, these POV shots then of um, like someone's following her, this Sandra, the stalking um, scenes, yeah, yeah, I, I love all that, see, um. There's like two really like effective jump scenes as well. Did you see? Did you remember them? Like yeah. with Stefano turns up at her doorstep at one point, and I man, I that's how you do a jump scene. Like you know, you get the films nowadays. They seem to do them like all the time, and they're cheap jumps. Yeah, yeah. cheap like cats and shit like that. But yeah, and this piano, is done. Yeah, really hits well. a piano or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But we gotta say as well. Um, so all this is linked to this strange painting now that Sandra's mother did. Hold on, just a second. What's up? Yep. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, did I miss Ginger? Um. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think we've mentioned mentioned him in the chat. I didn't see him in here, but I see uh, Wild Guy saying, "Hey." But what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I, did, I didn't. You're see still him. in here. Yeah, I didn't see his message. Hey, and hey, then uh, Wild. I'll just go through this right quick. It ain't uh, so a few few messages. Uh, Wild says, uh, "Love a good mystery in film." Yeah, man. Oh man, yeah. you love this one. Watching Jalo always puts me in a good mood when I've got some crap life problems going on. Yeah, for sure, man. Man, that's exactly yeah. That's what I do. It just takes me away from every fucking thing in the world. Uh, and then, uh, then he lock says, himself into a film for like ninety minutes." Right. And then Wild Guy says, uh, I may check it out, Q boy. Like, I, I like honestly, I'm not being funny now. Don't don't may check it out, definitely check it out. Um, yeah. and then you can blame me later if you don't like it. But I mean, I don't think you know, if you're a Jallo fan, like of all the stuff that we mentioned, I don't think there's any way that you won't like this. And again, I'm still what Gizmo said, still flipping my mind. Um, right. but yeah, um, but yeah, where was we? So there's a strange painting linked to this film, you know, to the yeah. to the plot of this film. Right. Um, and that feels like, did it. That feels like some other film we know that <laughs> we keep mentioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so again, I don't think it's giving anything away to say there's this very iconic image of this devil type, you know, attacking this young girl. Yeah. There's, you know, you see a haste kind of thing or a building in the background. Um and straight away, you know, without it being mentioned in the film, you kind of realize that it's the scene from a, the first scene of the film with the young right. girl getting killed. Yeah. Um, again, that's, you know, you're told that later on in the film, so you're not giving nothing away in that regard. Um, you've got Nadi, who's um, the midwife. She visits the doctor and they're trying to kind of cover up what's been going on. Um and she's basically worried about, you know, if the count's going to, like, say anything about all these seances. Um, but isn't it like um, these seances are all fake anyway, isn't they? Because don't they have, like, speakers under the chairs and shit? That's the medium woman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, the one who got killed earlier on and in the film. And that's not a spoiler because it shows it, like, in the first time they do a seance. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, I'm not... When, with this film, I want to go to a certain way. I do want to go quite far, but I'm not certainly not going to give anything away in, in terms of 
the killer or any you know can, major spot plot. I would even go as far as saying like uh, there's definitely a, a, a there's a scene in the film that really reminds me of uh, Mill. Is it Mill of the Stone Women? I've never seen that one. Yeah. Okay. Nin- Nineteen sixty film, I think. Yeah. It's toward the end of the film. But okay, it yeah. really reminds me of Mill of the Stone Women, and I know that's that's an older film, much older. That's kind of a is that proto Jalo or it's definitely like it's like a kind, of, kind of, a, of a gothic in a way. I think it's okay, like first yeah. Italian gothic. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I that's one is. I need to get, yeah, because that's like on Arrow, I think, as well. Right. Uh, but there's it seems like there's a heavy influence from that film on this film. Uh, right, okay. That's so. got me interested. Yeah, yeah. Um okay. So, like, no spoilers now, but I did say earlier, you know, I don't I don't think this is a major spoiler, but all these people connected to these seances and all this spooky shit that goes on earlier, they're all getting off one by one. Um, I do want to say, you know, there's a scene with the Count um, and he's getting stalked while he's at home. Um, and he lives in this place, man. It's got suits of fucking armour. Um, yeah. and it's got swords fucking over the world, real like, swords, real axes, board. battle axes, and shit. man, yeah. yeah. And I mean, his death scene as well, you know, because he obviously gets killed, but he gets killed by like a sword to the chest. They do call it a halibut or something. I don't, no, it's not know. a sword, it's it's oh, a, right, it's like a great axe, but it's got the, the spear part, okay, the yeah. Because I was confused, I thought it's a sword, but it, yeah, obviously not. It's that, it's uh, a great axe, but it's got that point on the end, and he's. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But I mean, such a great scene as well. I do um, think that the film does lack a little bit, like in the blood department. You know, I I kind of wish there was a little more in certain scenes. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That probably makes sense a little bit. Um, but, I think it makes up for that for me. For atmosphere, but, it's, but atmosphere and and I think it's well acted. I don't think that the chemistry is particularly good. Between, That's my only gripe with the film. Yeah. yeah. Between the two leads, the, the chemistry is not great, you know? Uh, yeah, because I'm going to come on to that scene anyway. Um, but damn. But, Go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, so Paolo, like, thinks the murder of the little, like, basically the murder of the little girl um, is basically, you know, the killer of that is doing these murders. So he he he, he contacts, um, I think he contacts um, the girl's father or Stefano, I should say, contacts the girl's father that got killed, mm-hmm. um, and he says something like to him, like basically just don't get involved, as if he knows something. Which is weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but um, yeah, like you say, there's a there's a whole thing with um, the typewriter as well with the T. So. The murder notes are being sent, but they're like this this missing kind of letter of the T. Right. If that makes sense. I know I'm probably not saying it right. It's, but um it's like a line or something missing. Yeah, right. yeah. So we find out later on in the film that's a big plot point, you know, and to find out who the killer is. Um, oh yeah. And you get some heavy explanation with some heavy dialogue that's yeah. It's really good though. I don't I think like if you watch it the first time, it might put you off. Like really. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um I think you have yeah, to watch I can it. see that. I can I can definitely see that. But uh um, I think you'd have to watch it. You need to watch it a couple of times. There's a great effective scene as well, which I think is amazing. Where um so Paolo's in the church and um we kind of like get this crop like this like cross of christ like comes crashing down like meant you know obviously to kill him um yeah. and misses him like narrowly um right and that just you know sets up the the film is amazing anyway but like little creepy scenes like that like all the way through yeah somebody comes out of the dark on his ass yeah man i, I tell you what. <laughs> shit you know like and then runs away <laughs> like yeah it, know, it's just uh, done so well um yeah. The whole church the, aspect as well. The dark streets with the with the cobblestone yeah, roads, yeah. and then you know the the one. Um, there's one shot where Stefano's walking, and I know it sounds silly, and I even called 
uh, Tash in there. I say, hey, come check this out. And Stefano's walking, but it's like lit. Like this, the way it's lit is just crazy great, man. And it's yeah. like the wind's blowing and the trees. And there's like this, it's like an emerald shaped lantern. And it's like a light blue. I don't know how to explain it, but it's it looks fucking great. Uh, the film is yeah, a simple it's shot, great. but it's to me it looks amazing. But because uh, there is a scene later on that I'm going to mention as well, because I I did actually go back and um, read like an Antonio Bido like interview, which I'll, I'll I'll mention a few things after. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we will come on to the scene Dirk said about. The lovemaking scene, they don't seem to have much chemistry between them, is my only the only thing in the film that kind of like doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um and it's kind of awkward that sex scene in there. You do see her full fully like frontal, but I, I don't, don't know. Buy... In the lovemaking scene, they seem like they got chemistry. But... I don't know. I I didn't buy it. I but in the other, it. like everything else is just kind of like, you know, whatever. But and it's, I, you know. Yeah, I, I I just didn't. That's the one thing I didn't buy into their relationship the way it happened as well. It, it, yeah. If that makes sense, I didn't think it could like, you know. Oh, well, you never know, like you know, because he seems kind of I don't know, like not a type, but yeah. But anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we got we got to mention this one scene now. I think this is one of the best kills you've ever seen in a in a in a Jalo film, and I think. He recreated this scene from Watch Me When I Kill as well. But Dirk's going to know exactly what I mentioned when I start. Um, so you've got Sandra's mother-in-law, and she's in a wheelchair, and she's stopped by this killer late at night. She's waiting for, like, half an hour for her carer to come in. Right. Um, she's all alone. Um, but originally, the killer has got into the place just on the intent of maybe stealing the painting. But she disturbs him or, you know... Um, you could even say, though, you know, Bay of Blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Bay of Blood would be a good comparison as well. There's right. there's a few, actually, with that right. same kind of feel. Um, but he attacks this poor woman in the wheelchair and pretty much throws her into this fire and burns yeah. her alive. And it is fucking horrific. It, I can't think of many worse deaths in a Jalo film than that. Right, because even with an agent of death, um, even in like Blood and Black Lace, there's a similar kill, like right? right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I suppose you could say the killing of Cropsey and the burning and that, but right, right. for me, like with this, it's just done so I don't know, it just comes out of nowhere, right? And, and yeah. I just, you're not expecting that, shit. no, no, and um. It's just realistically done. Is is uh, you know you got the fucking I don't know the music as well. Um, the killer's got a schedule to keep. You know. Yeah, yeah. He ain't, it's, he ain't um, messing around. Again, I because I want to go quite deep into this, but I don't want to give everything away. Um, so Nadi's the midwife. Um, I will say so there's something strange going on with one of it. Well, with her son. I won't. I won't give to give all yeah. that away. You yeah. won't give that one away. And there's a um, scene with the with a doll. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking out there, man. Um, it's funny, but it's done. It's it's played so straight that, yeah. like, and I mean, you know, we could say like a son. That actor who played that part is fucking Gio, amazing. Gio, Gio Franco is that it? I'm know. not sure, but he does a great. Gian Franco Bullo. Right, uh, so I'm got yeah, I'm gonna minus minus spoil it. So okay, hold basically, on. Hold on. like we're gonna spoil yeah. it. So uh, go let's let's go with it. Uh, sorry, y'all. Just uh, I just got to do it. So I'm gonna do that right there. And then now we're gonna. Do <laughs> I know it's taking time, but yeah, we got to spoil it a little bit, man. So. <laughs> Yeah. And that's quite fitting actually that picture because right. So Nadi, <laughs> the midwife's son, is this fucking like man child. He's kind of like um, this. No, no. <laughs> no. 
but he's yeah, he's this man child, and he's played really well by this guy. Just uh, something happens with this doll, like Dirk mentioned. Um, yeah, but she grabs a doll, doesn't she? And she says, "You've been a bad doll or something." And yeah, oh, man, starts, so fucking starts hate, smacking man. it and ripping its arm off. It's all dirty. It looks like he, you know, there's no telling what he's done to that doll. Uh, oh, and it's like she's poking the damn doll's eyes out and. Uh, Shit, and then he man. kind of he flips. Yeah. Then this man child flips and kind of wraps <clears throat> it all back. And uh, at first he, he's liking what she's doing to it, but then he she went a little too far when she poked the eyes out of her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I will say, right, the killer then goes back to like Sandra's place, and that's where you get the real fucking goblin score kicking in. Um, and it's exactly like an Argento film, like because. The killer stalks Sandra. Um, yeah. But again, he kind of gets like, you know, something happens and um, he ends up running off. The killer ends up running off. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, this is where, you know, i got to tread carefully with what we say now, I would say. I, there's one scene I, I'm definitely going to mention. Um, so we got to come on to this incredible kill scene, which actually ups the fire scene for me as well um and i want to get dirk's like take on this as well so the killer jumps out on this doctor now um he pushes him into the water uh the doctor kind of holds on to the side of this boat and kind of tries to get away in the middle of this fucking you know in the middle of venice i think it is um but the killer sees this that the that this guy oh, yeah, I love oh, the boat. It's like a boat chase. Oh, it's fucking amazing. Scene. And uh, but it's I mean, you see it in like like the Euro crime films and stuff. How many times have you seen it in a jalo? No, no, not at all, really. Um right. I'm trying to think. I'm, I think I've seen it once, maybe. I'm I i can not think of which film it is though. Um, um there's Kind of Amsterdam, maybe it was something similar. Well, maybe. I haven't I, seen that, so that's more to do with like a boat chase rather than a victim yeah. getting into the water. This is a stalking uh, scene. Uh, oh, it is amazing, man. Um, after he done kicked him in the damn water, you know. And when he realizes he's hanging on to this boat and he's still alive, the killer then gets into this speedboat yeah. and fucking brutal, man. He just fucking mows him down in the speedboat. And you could um, even pull, like, maybe say that that uh, maybe that was pulled from Deep Red in a way. I was going to say you could put that in any yeah. fucking Argento film, any right. one of his top films, yeah. and it would not look out of place. It, right. Like, it, it's by far the standout moment of the film. Um, yeah. Although there's, for me, there's half a dozen standout moments. Um, but, yeah, this is where we are going to. Like tread carefully. Um, so Paolo keeps getting these notes, you know, saying they're gonna basically kill him, and um, we get the shots of like the foggy streets as well in uh, Venice. Um, I love all that with the with the music. Um, so Paolo gets like attacked, but like we don't really see the attacker much. And I think it's with a is it with a pair of scissors, Dirk? Yeah, you can just make it out. Yep, like. And then the killer kind of just runs off. Um, no, oh, I thought that was a knife, but I'm not sure. I'm uh, not sure if it was. Yeah, I couldn't quite make it out. It looked like it I thought you were just talking about a different scene with the scissors. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so basically, then Stefano, then you know, he's like kind of finding out different things now, and it's all kind of clicking. Like who's he's starting to get his memory. It's also coming back. He's putting all the pieces together. You know. Yeah, there's the typewriter he finds out. You know, I'm not going to say whose it is, but he finds out. You know, that's linked to the killer. It um, actually does really all come together. Part. Like it really it does. does. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's no nothing in this is so outlandish. You would say shit. I don't think that's true, or that would happen. Yeah. It kind of like yeah. You know. It, right. it, it plays it straight in that regard, but um, yeah. Where do we go with this now? So. The painting obviously plays. Bastard! 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 Oh, no, sorry. sorry. That's all right, man. That's all right. Um, I thought you. 
<laughs> I don't know. It was, uh, we're getting we're getting to the nitty gritty now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I gotta watch with what we say from now on in. But um, yeah. yeah, needless to say, um, so the so the tape is found, um, and the pages of this book is found, or the or the book itself is found from the you know from the first kill. Um, it's all linked to to someone. I'm not gonna say who. Um, and I mean, like, obviously, I would imagine Dirk, you you probably realized who the killer was early on. Yeah, would you say you don't have to say who it is, but kind of. But there's there's things that happen that that you know you still. I don't know if anybody would 100 guess. It. I mean, did you on the first? No, no not at all. 100 I mean, um, if you're being honest. 100. percent I've read, yeah. I've read books since to give the the killer way just by mentioning other films yeah but um no i think it's done so well the ending um right and just realizing what i can say and what i can't but um let's yeah. just say right the last shot of the film which we gotta mention there's a dummy drop um because I, I always love well, mentioning it, it is i'm not gonna say what it is i'm not gonna say what it is it is but it's not like you know what I mean? It's not like other dummy drops. It don't. I look... think it's well done. Because... Right, right. That's what I'm saying. It's not. We... You can't. It's so far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we see what it is as well, close up as right. they're falling. Yeah. Um, it's not hokey at all. No, um, it don't look like a, a mannequin and shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, man, that's. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that's all right man but um yeah you know i've got bloody hell i've got notes like coming out of all all these years but um in terms of the general the, the plot and all that that is like the bloodstained shadow um it's a high eight for me and like probably a nine now the more i think about it okay i really love this film right i really love this film i'm sorry if i'm going on but no I you're mean, good no, you know, you got. I'm, I get passionate really easy about oh, stuff yeah. I love. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really dig it, man. I mean, this was like my first go at it, and I watched it twice. You know, um, I watched it the first time, um, and then I watched it the second time with the commentary uh, from Troy Howard and Urkelani and and uh, Thompson. But, see, uh, and I've not. I've not heard that commentary track, and I oh yeah, it's great, it's to. great, yeah. Um, because um, I just didn't have the time, and sometimes I wish we had like a month to prepare for some of these. But um, right. Apple, it's slippery. No, don't worry, friends. <laughs> it's it's not quite that level, dummy drop, but <laughs> right. Yeah. It's yeah. um, yeah, yeah, that that's yeah. fucking crazy. <laughs> now I'm what did you bad. think um <laughs> i don't think uh i gotta mention his name here kappa lichio i don't think this is his best performance it's not as good as haste of the laughing windows it's not but i think what? maybe it's maybe it's the source material maybe uh because i from what i read i heard was he was like a mainly a theater actor right yeah, actor. I think he. I think he. Um, he was well known in Italy at the time. He was well known, like but TV he's, work, I he's think, still yeah. not like the highest of the high. You know what I mean? Like um, right. Yeah. And same with uh, Cassini, Stefiani. Yeah, Stefani, yeah. Stefi, is that how you say her name? Stef, Stefania. Yeah, Stefania. My bad, Stefania Cassini. I think she was probably a little higher than him, just because of the spirit. I would say. Um, Antonio Beto said of her that she was very professional. Um, right. She wrote something because he did. Um, he did write a book about his life a few years back, and she did write write some kind words for him in there. And I think they're still talking to this day, you know. Because I think I think he's still alive, isn't he? Is Antonio Beto still alive? Do you know, Dirk? Um. I think, so. I think he's on that interview. He's on. He's there's an interview yeah. on, on the on this release. Oh, there you go then. Because the he's, interview he's I just saw. Quite, he's quite young. Um, 
Okay. He yeah. was he was very young director, man. Uh also I did find like from so Nathaniel Thompson on the commentary track <clears throat> highly recommends to watch the Italian version of this. Okay. Yeah. Like without the English track. He says to watch the Italian version, it's miles better. He said that the English is very clunky. So uh yeah, I yeah, I didn't really see that. Didn't but I gotta go back and watch the Italian now. So that he said, "Oh that. God, yeah, I've got to so, do the same, and I've got to, yeah, I've got an excuse to watch with the commentary track as well now as well." But um, right. Sip, Stelvio Cipriani score. He did write the score, but it was performed. Everything was performed in the film by Goblin. So that's well, it says like from what the information I'm seeing, it says Stelvio Cipriani. Right. So uh, I don't see Goblin weird. anywhere. So I don't know. Yeah, he did say in in like I will come on to it anyway because I got it. Um so yeah, so okay then. So um Cipriani's eerie melodies and electric uh electrics performed by Goblin are all used startling in effect at times. There there's a sparseness, solace. Celebrity pianos before shifting gears to the thumping or ominous synths or bass clubs. So this is what he said, the director. The music is truly beautiful. Cipriani did a great job. With the collaboration of Goblin and especially Claudio Simonetti, I attended every recording session in the studio. Um, before his death, Stelvio said the music was much, better, was much better because of the collab with Goblin. So, yeah, that's straight from the horse's mouth. Um, okay, well, the I, this is a little something I wrote. I'm surprised they didn't mention it in the commentary track. Yeah, they did. That's where I got this information from. It says yeah, Goblin was supposed. To, it says Goblin was supposed to score the film, but there was not enough money to pay him. Oh, there you go. Then that's answers your question because they were supposed to score the film, but they got right. Cipriani, Cip, Cipriani to score the film. Right. So they ended up just playing it. I remember now. Okay. So, so it was cheaper for them to just. So we were, so we were both right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was yeah. like, what the hell? Like, because yeah, I know yeah. these guys know what the hell they're talking about. They live and breathe this shit, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's probably one that's spelt out in that commentary track as it should have been, maybe. But, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's basically what I remember now. Yeah. Um, okay. That's what I kept hearing, though. Like, they didn't have, he didn't have enough money for them, you know? And right, so it's yeah, also so probably that makes sense, yeah. And it's probably also the reason, like an actor like Serato didn't have, he didn't have enough money. That's why he wasn't in it very long, you know. I uh, mean, yeah, but I think that works for the film. Um, I it think, does. It I does. think the, the music score actually works for the film now by them just doing Goblin, just playing it rather than writing it as well. Yeah. Because I don't see personally how you could top that score. I think. I think it's one of the best scores I've seen from a non agent. Well, they also went on to say that, that that vinyl is sold and became very popular in recent years. Like it sold tons, tons of copies. Uh, I'm not surprised. I, I mean, this is a score because this is something I'd play like just at home, I think. Right. But if I can get a copy, I'll have to check YouTube and that. But um, right. so Bido said, the standout scene is the, um, the falling crucifix scene. Um, I see uh, Wild Guy says, uh, appreciate your stream, guys. Have a good night. Yeah, man, I appreciate you uh, hanging out. Cheers, man, for coming by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think Wild Guy likes, I think he's done videos on Jalo, haven't he, in the past? I think so. Oh, yeah. I think he's got one upcoming. Um, so if yeah, everybody wants to do a collab, then just let us know or if he wants to come on. Right. Um but yeah, I was gonna say. Um, so that crucifix scene is almost identical to the one in um, the weapon, the hour, the motive, uh, mm. which is on another box set by by Arrow, um, yeah. and the murder of the doctor as well was done by stuntman Sergio Mione, um, and he was quite a well-known stuntman of the time. But they had him in this film because he could act as well. So he played the actor, you know, the doctor as an actor, but he'd done all his own stunts, um, which was interesting. Um, there's 
I've got loads on this, man. Do you want to do you want to say some stuff yourself? I, I pretty much got everything out that I had to say. Uh, I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know about Craig Hill, the the guy playing Don Paolo. He he was he was also in Dracula versus Frankenstein. So right. I'm yeah. like I'm probably going to end up buying that damn film because there's several people in that movie uh, from these uh, one or two of these films. Uh, and, You'll have to ask Steve about that because I'm sure Steve will have watched that one. Right, but he, I know he's in that, and and he also did another film called uh, that I'm. I'm curious about. I'm intrigued by, uh, and the crows will dig your grave. Oh God, so, that sounds awesome! Yeah. yeah, yeah, man, I want to check that out. So, just the title alone, like I don't really know much about it, but yeah, I'm in. I love titles. You know, sometimes it's all it takes is a is a good title to. But, but Beto yeah. actually said Beto actually said of this actor, you know, um, Craig Hill. He said yeah. he started off very, um, like, wasn't very good. He couldn't get into the character. Um, he was kind of overplaying the part. But Beto had to have words with him and kind of get him to play it more relaxed type way. Yeah. And it ended up working out really well. Um, I think he's – who would you say is a standout, though? I would say it's Craig Hill. I think I, he... I think it's the count for me. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I was totally He's bought got, into that. You know, talking about Serato? Yeah. 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 Uh, but the Craig Hill has he has so much more to do in the film. Like, and I don't know, man. That toward the end of the film, he's pretty convincing. If you know what I mean. Oh, he's like, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I I think he's a, in my opinion, he's the standout of everyone in the film, but I think that uh, the character you said and the one I said, like, even Eclipse, you know, the main two, like, leads, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say his name again. Lino, I'll, I'll just put it at that. But the, the woman as well, she was, um, yeah, she was very professional, he said, on set. Uh, and she, you know, she she knew what she, how she was going to do it and did it perfectly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got quite a bit, man, but I'm not going to bore everyone. Um I'll just have a quick look and see if there's anything worth saying. All right. Well, yeah, y'all don't forget to, you know. <laughs> so I do want to mention a couple of things quickly. Um, so the cinematic death of Dr. Alozi on the canal. Yeah, this is what the, the director said. Um, it was very complex to shoot it. It took two days to light the 200 meters of canal. And that's just two days just to light that scene. Um, it was filmed in late February, so the water was very cold. Sergio Mione, who played Dr. Alonzi, um, was not just a good actor, but a professional stuntman, which I just mentioned. Um, he was cast to play that role because of that. He almost fainted a few times because the water was so icy. They had to like bring him out, put him up against this heater for 10 minutes and then go back into the water, oh, uh, really? which was funny. Um, and um, basically the scene caused a lot of damage to other boats because if you watch that scene closely, the boat does career into other boats. And apparently yeah, everyone, close. Yeah. everyone complained. So the producer at the end of filming had to like fork out the money to, to like basically pay for all these repairs. Yeah, that's um, that's a real like close. They're they're pretty much hidden. Yeah, Looks they like. do. I think they do. Um, right. And the last thing I don't want to bore everyone. The last thing I'll say is um, the film failed at the time because of bad publicity and distribution. This is what the director said. Um, it came out in summer, and moreover, the genre was waning at that time because people were getting tired of the giallo in like the summer of seventy eight. Yeah, it's um, kind of like. Kind of too late for yeah, too like, late in the game basically. Because yeah, you but, got um, the what the police Yoteski is yeah yeah strong they right were now. they were yeah definitely. Um, but Let he said catch... it did it did sell well um, okay. over the you know over the world and um, yeah basically that's it yeah. 
Yep. I think it's got a pretty good cult following from what I understand. Uh, people love the, the score. I do as well. I, I, I mean, I got to give the film, like, I've seen it twice now, so I don't know if you consider that a second viewing or not with the commentary, but I kind of do. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'll give it a seven and a half out of ten. Uh, it's probably now thinking about it as we go through these, it is the strongest of the three. So, like, oh, easily. Uh, um, yeah, it's an 8.5, possibly will go to a nine. The more I yeah. think about it, um, I could, I think this is going to be this one the surprised reason, me because I've not seen it for ages. Yeah, um, go on, so I do. The reason I give it a seven and a half though, like, is because of the two leads. I feel like that's kind of it's that. And also, they could have probably had had a little more blood, you know. Because okay, I mean, because okay. there's yeah. already films out. There's already Jolly out that have blood. Like Deep Red is, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. Great kill scenes. And if you look at a film like Deep Red, which you know you can't really compare it to Deep Red or nothing, but like I'm saying, like the chemistry between Hemmings and Nickelodeon. Is yeah, not yeah. the same as you know Stefani and uh Stefani Cassini and uh Lucio uh Cap damn Lino. I know <laughs> Lino. I, can't, I can't say that second Lino one. Capoliccio. <laughs> that, right. Yeah, yeah. The, the um, chemistry is just that's the things that hurt the film for me. The story is good. I like the mood, the atmosphere, the, the way it's shot. All that's great. Uh Man, I, I highly recommend this box set, though. I think this, to me, like this is one of the stronger ones, man. Out of out of the six, I was uh, going to ask you, hey, would you rate this eight the six then? So I I don't know. I really have to look at everything, all the films okay. involved, because you know I like four a lot. I like one Paul's film. There's just yeah. one film that I don't care for in four. But I mean, but it's got Sister Ursula, so Sister Sister Ursula and and uh, Killer is among us. Killer well. is among yeah. us is the one for me out of that set. But and Arabella, but this, I love. Um, highly recommend this set. Uh, before I mean, I don't know. It's probably got a while before it sells out. You so. can't go wrong with this set. Cause but, the, the price point and everything about this set. Yeah, um, you're paying. It's six, worth it alone for the Bloodstained Shadow, and I mean. Death yeah. carries a cane is just like a real fucking added bonus. Right. Make it you die is a good film as well, which I didn't it's think got I was updated, gonna that. It's got updated uh English translation on the subtitles if you want to watch the Italian. But then it right. does have on all three of these films, it does have the English track if you want to watch it that way, you know. Yeah. So, watch so them, I watch don't want to oversell it too much, but Right. Um, I think the Bloodstained Shadow. I've not like I've not seen this for in forever, and I couldn't really remember much about it because you're talking, I don't know, at least five six years ago, maybe. Right. Um, it's gone. This has jumped into my top, say, twenty five jolly of all time. Like that's a high recommendation I can give it. Really. I and like if you had to put it, What would something... you put it up against if you said this was similar to another film? Would you say like Tenebrae or something like that? Maybe. No. No. It's not what would you what would you say without giving like anything away? I would I don't like, I don't think it's similar to obviously it's similar to the Hates of Laughing Windows, yeah? yeah but yeah. I don't I don't think it's got much in common with um Don't, don't Talk torture. to Duckless. No. Only only because of a couple because of the setting and because they're yeah, yeah. A couple involved. of scenes with the football with the priest yeah. and yeah, yeah. Right. But let me catch a chat right quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, Texas says, absolutely great stream as always. I appreciate it, Texas, man. She is tax. Thanks a lot, man. Wild Wrangler says, Lon Chaney Jr. in Dracula versus Frankenstein. Well, there you go. I'm buying it. So that's, that's all you had to uh, say. <laughs> so, Dirk's pocket money's gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, Texas says, day one is horror. Okay. Day one is horror. I'm not that, sure what he's reverting okay. to there. We got Mikey's Morgan here. Dirk Diggler, hey, have a great weekend. Yeah, man. Appreciate it, bro. I knew, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, thanks for popping in, man. Checking it out. And anybody future uh, that's 
watching this in the future and check you know consider uh liking and hitting the Some are saying that you're bipolar. Wow, what does that mean? What's the key? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you there, Darren? Am I froze? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can hear me, but you can't see me good. Can okay, you? I can hear you. I can't see. But it's like, right, I can so see I can... you, but you, you look like a statue. So Yeah, uh, yeah. Shall I come back in? Uh, yeah. I look demonic. <laughs> I'll come back in. I won't be a sack. Okay. Let's see. I got let's see what other I haven't done in a while. I guess we can do the This is all the whiskey you possess? The bottle is finished. 6 30, I'll be waiting then. Ciao. I thought of you too. Mother, this cloth smells of death. How in the fuck are y'all doing tonight? It's I who repudiate you, and in the- Better spray yourself, hon. You're not supposed to be in here. I've got to use the telephone. You're not supposed to be in here. No. I just think you can walk in here like that. Did you know that the germs can come through the wires? I never call and I never answer. That's a good way to get sick. Very, very sick. That's how I got so sick. Someone called me on the telephone! I must they smell like a pile of bullshit! Yeah. Hell yeah. I don't know what happened there. I thought you could hear me, but yeah, I've probably... <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about my internet doing well. But, um, yeah. Right. And uh, Tex says, Darren, the president of the Peter Bark fan club. Yeah. Absolutely 100%. Yeah, man. I love that fucking character. Yeah. He's a. Uh... Burial. Whoa! <sighs> Shit! Where the <laughs> fuck do you get that clip from? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what film that's from? Or? Yeah, uh, Far Out, man. I think that's the name of it. Oh, okay, yeah. Crazy. But... <laughs> what about the little boy? What clip's that from? Uh, Gummo. Gummo, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> crazy, crazy. That clip's a lot crazier than that, but uh, I, well, I you just can, put yeah, that you part can't of put it, it on. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the shit they're saying, but. Uh, but yeah, man, it's been a good stream. We uh, covered the Forgotten Jolly Volume Six. Y'all check it out. Don't uh, don't sit on fucking Bloodstained Shadow. Don't. Yeah, sit on you it. get if you don't want to get the box set for this is sixty, but you get three films, and uh, you, or you got can the get the eighty-eight films you get eighty-eight for, films version of uh, yeah. Bloodstained Shadow. Um, but I think he. I oh, mean, show, show it again. Come. Yeah. yeah. So I think though, man, like I'm not trying to tell people to buy this. I would suggest oh, even the it. DVD if if yeah, if, you, if you're a fan of of the Royal Jalo or whatever. But I also would say the other two films are good too, man. So you know, I would just just go and buy it. You know, I love all the box sets. <laughs> I, I do love all the Forgotten Jolly box sets, yeah. and this would actually be probably my Fifth, like highest, which is quite surprising. What? Um, Damn. Yeah, I'd okay. say fourth or fifth because I like the others so much as well. Wow. Okay. The only one I would say best that's worse than this is the one with trauma. Yeah, that's the, the first. That, the first one, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't so know. Yeah. Have, we might have to do a ranking uh, sometime. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably about fourth or fifth. But I mean, don't let that put you off because. Yeah. Um, Every single one of them are good. Every single one of them. Um, Naked You Die is, you know, not going to be for everyone, I don't think. But, yeah. Oh, uh, while Wrangler's saying the year is 1910, Dirk. 
Or was was Texas asking me what the first year of Har was? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because he didn't have a question mark if he was. And from what I remember, it's like 1896, I thought. But maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, the Haunted Palace, maybe. Yeah. That's the first. I'm not sure. Right. Uh, I think it's 1896. Could be wrong. But, you know, if I am, I'm sure y'all will tell me in the chat. <laughs> so, or in the comment section if you're watching this in the future. But, yeah, man, I think this is a good one, man. Like, I've been yeah, working, like, I've been working like a damn gov government mule, and uh, I, I got this snuck in, man. Like, I, you know, uh, broke down and <laughs> devoted some time to this shit to, to make this happen. And, uh, yeah, and um, we might be doing something different next time. So, right. Um, we're planning on maybe just doing a couple of recorded videos over the Easter. Yeah. Um, Exorcist Free being one and Silent Rage being the other. That's yeah. kind of the plan. Don't hold us that at the moment. But, um, right. yeah, and we've got to say as well about Dan's new show, which we're on regular now called The oh. Day Drive In. Okay, I see what Tex is saying. He's saying that's a day one buy and, and the beyond. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is horror. Okay. I don't, I'm not familiar with what this is horror is, though. So that's why it threw me off. But uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Is it like a collection, like a trailer uh, type release? This is horror. It's not the Stephen King thing, is it? Where he does like documentary style. No, I don't think so. I think it's already out. Right. But oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I was going to say about the Dead End Drive-Ins, a new show we're doing with Dan. Um, yeah. And Gorophobia, Keith, yeah. over at um, Visited by Voices 1. So if you get a chance, then definitely check that out. We probably said it. I, I don't know if we said it at the start of the show. But, yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, we, got, sorry, we, did. We, did. we recently covered Humongous and Hell Knight. And then, That's right, yeah. It's and then the first there. the first episode, we covered Boogans and uh, Funeral Home. So Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and Dirk's obviously got a chat, um, a street uh, video out with um, Gorophobe as well on Clockwork Orange. So check that oh. out. Oh, okay, um, Texas is saying your show is horror. Okay, all right, man. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for clarifying that up because I, I was really confused there for a Sometime, second. Sometimes, yeah, you see the comments and you're not yeah. sure. Like you just, right. yeah. But I guess we'll get out of here, man. And uh, I'm a I'm gonna end this with a. I guess this is gonna be my new outro, um, but I guess we're gonna go. And uh, thanks for everybody commenting, and participating in the chat, checking the video yeah. out in the future. Uh, love the support we're getting. We're getting. We're we're slowly getting more subs, and that's cool. But man, we do this straight out of passion, man, for the genre. Uh, film and... yeah i hope that comes through as well I, I, right you know uh you can never tell when you're on the other side of the stream but um yeah, yeah man we're gonna keep doing this we're not doing this for subs or views or any of that right. shit we're or doing money, this just for love man yeah, right. yeah i'd never is... i'd never ask people for money either like, no nah, you know. this is our passion man and uh i guess hold on we got one more comment and then we'll get out of here um let's see Texas says, have a great rest of the weekend, gentlemen. You do the same as well, man. And I'll I mean, be seeing yeah. yeah. Uh and Wild Rain will say, see y'all. And uh I'll see Tex. I think Tex will be on the Rotten. We'll be on the Rotten stream tomorrow. Um uh, on Gizmo's channel. It's gonna be, I believe, seven Eastern Standard Time. It's I think six for me here, but uh, You'll have to check with Gizmo with that because I don't know if their clocks have gone forward. Okay. In Norway, yeah. maybe. I'm not sure because yeah. I was just kind of eight by an hour till tomorrow. But either um, way, y'all check out, like, make sure y'all stay tuned and, you know, that ought to be a pretty good one. But uh, we're yeah. going to get out of here, y'all. And uh, thanks again, everybody. And go vote for, if you haven't voted yet, go vote the Horror YouTuber of the Month. Absolutely, and, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah. So okay, Texas says actually didn't watch the movie, so I'll be on the next one. Okay. All right. All right, man. Uh, well we're gonna get out of here, y'all. And uh have a good one, guys, and we'll catch you later. Right.
Michael!